welcome. Uh, we're going to let everyone start coming in here. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Uh, we have a super exciting night tonight. If you want to, um, you can change your view if you want from gallery to super in the top right. You should be able to switch that on and off. Um, if you're coming in, uh, make sure you mute yourself uh, for right now, and um, we'll we'll be giving everyone uh, that's involved uh, their chance. We have six amazing startups that are pitching tonight. Uh, we have six amazing judges, investors who are going to be uh, deciding which company gets a thousand dollars cash, and. Uh, we're super excited for this. Uh, I've been, you know, excited all month for the pitch competitions are, are my favorite events that we do. Um, and we're going to give it uh, a few moments here, uh, probably another five to 10 minutes as people come in. If you see on the bottom there, there's a button that says chat. Please introduce yourselves in the chat to everyone. Let everyone know where you're from what's everyone working on, drop in your emails or your LinkedIn um, links or your Entra usernames if, if you're on the Entra app. If, if this is your first event, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Entra. We're a social network for the future of work, entrepreneurs, freelancers, and investors. Our whole focus is streamlining the entrepreneurship process helping people start businesses easier and faster, making entrepreneurship accessible to everyone from their phones or laptops. So you can jump into a community where they support what you're doing and you can find your team and everyone that you need to much, much easier and faster through our app. So um, let me continue to let people in. We have a great turnout. We're, we're probably gonna go well over 200 people um, and at the end of the event, we are going to do some networking. So please stick around so you can meet some of the other attendees. We'll do some breakout sessions. You can meet some other cool entrepreneurs and investors from our community. And if anyone has any, yes, great. Glad that you're introducing yourselves. Please introduce yourselves as, as we kick things off here. Like I said, drop in your, your, you know, LinkedIn's, your emails, all of that. Uh, I'm going to drop in the link to join Entra um, so that you guys can, you know, connect with people after the event um, on our app and, you know, within our community where we do a bunch of events and, and we love bringing in speakers and amazing people for the events. And we love net, like bringing people together to network. Um, and hear from sponsors and our in investors and founders, but we also really value the digital and virtual connection on your own time. That's where the app comes in so you can freely connect and network with people from wherever you want on, on the app. Um, it's just joinentre.com. If you guys have any questions about anything going on tonight, uh, feel free to private message me on the chat as well. If there's anything that we can do to help you, um, you know, we are going to be doing a lot of these pitch competitions coming up. There's, there's a lot more that we have in store. We have a ton of really cool other events coming up. Uh, there's one tomorrow night with our partner for score law, which I'm sure Pete will get into and share. Um, if there's anything else that we can do, I'm going to drop in my email here in the chat as well. Um, and would love to hear any thoughts that you have about, you know, get, being part of our community, uh, being part of our events, if you guys want to get involved with the events in any way. Um, we're six minutes past uh, 530, and uh, we, we almost have 200 people in here, so this is great. Um, thank you all for joining. If you're just coming in, uh, we're going to get things kicked off here in just a few minutes with our, our partners of the event. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that all of our, our speakers, judges, sponsors are here. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to kick things off with uh, inviting Anaki from Start Engine up to speak. Uh, we're giving out $1,000 cash, but I'll let, I'll let him share what Start Engine is giving away 
and everything that they have going on with their equity crowdfunding platform, which is a fantastic uh, way to raise funding for your startups. Um, Anaki, are you there? Can you? Uh, I'm here. Hey, how are hey you? Guys. <laughs> hey, thanks for having us, Michael. For sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled for you guys to be a part of this. Um, and please feel free to share a little bit more about yourself and what you guys have going on with Start Engine and, and go through, you know, what you have to offer the finalists and then where people can learn more about what you guys are doing. Sure. Hey, everybody. Hope everyone has had a good day. I'll do a quick little intro and just a little bit about us. We're one of the sponsors with Entra. Um, Mike and I have been working over the last couple of weeks. So I'm, my name is Iñaki. I'm the head of partnerships at Start Engine. Start Engine is an equity crowdfunding platform. So if you guys are familiar with that, if you're not, I can definitely tell you what it is. It's essentially a way to raise money from the crowd, from both accredited and non-accredited investors. We currently have upwards of about 80 companies on our site, and they're all raising money from a million dollars up to, right now we have a company that just surpassed $23 million raised. It actually broke our record for highest single raise for a campaign. So we're really excited. It's a company, it's an autonomous uh, security robot company. So there's uh, all sorts of different companies on there. You can find a lot of diversity from uh, green tech and clean tech to consumer tech and consumer products to alcohol companies and tech and software. So really excited to be a part of this and support all the contestants and all the applicants and the Entre community as we kind of like grow with Entre and, and uh, support more, more, more programs. Uh, as a sponsor, we're giving away a first, second and third prize uh, to the final winners. First place will be $1,000 or 10% off um, our startup, Start Engine campaign management fee. The second place is $500, sorry, $750, and then third place is $500. So $1,000, $750, and $500. Uh, and we're really excited. We'll have some follow-up messaging after all this, so please enjoy the night. And if you're interested in Start Engine, reach out to me. We'll send some links around and uh, some follow-up emails. So thank you to everybody. Thanks, Mike, again, and uh, good luck tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we're, we're so happy to have Start Engine as part of this event and hopefully we can do a lot more. And I know a lot of founders, I mean, we had Don Dixon on as a speaker a couple months ago. She's raised multi, like, I, I think she's done two crowdfunding campaigns on Start Engine and has raised a million dollars both times. So uh, yeah, she's it's killing great. it. It's awesome. Yeah, so it's a great way to raise funding. Um, she actually just rolled out a course on crowdfunding too. So if anyone wants to intro to her, uh, I can definitely help with that. And you know, obviously, Anaki can can help with that as well. I'm sure he uh, he knows her well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being a part of this event. And um, uh, next, I'm going to bring up Pete from Fourscore Law. Uh, Pete, are you there? Can you, uh, I am here. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for, thanks for being a part of this. I'd love for you to share more about yourself and everything that you guys have going on at Fourscore Law. I also know that you guys put together a fantastic uh, PDF that we're gonna share out to the contestants. And uh, I'd love for you to also share about the event that we're, we're doing tomorrow night as well. All right, I'll try to hit each cylinder. <laughs> uh, so Pete Singh here, I'm with Fourscore Business Law. Uh, we're a Raleigh-based corporate law firm um, but we have some presence on the West Coast as well in San Jose. Uh, the reason we do what we do uh, is kind of a slogan, but also a tenant of ours. It's just that ideas uh, deserve opportunity. Uh, so we try to kind of bridge that gap uh, of resource, uh, break things down to plain English, make it simple. Um, so we see ourselves as part of a team uh, especially with early stage companies, people that are risking it all <laughs> to do what they do. Um, so we try to step into your shoes, get in the dirt and grime with you, um, and do it at a reasonable price point, offer flat rates when possible, and really just try to give you as much visibility as possible uh, to help budget and succeed at the same time. Um, so I mentioned the ideas deserve opportunity, core tenant. Uh, what we did for that end is put together a PDF resource full of links 
uh, for black focused uh, founders. Um, really any part of your team can probably benefit. It's a list of VCs, everything from what you need early stage through growth. Um, and as part of this competition, we'll be giving away uh, that resource to everyone, but also a free consultation as the third place prize. So you can sit down with one of us, probably virtually at this point, um, but pick our brains, uh, figure out what you need. Um, and tomorrow, uh, really interesting event, we're also co-hosting uh, a startup story. And that's with one of my colleagues, Sean Valley. And he'll be talking with uh, Cameron Hardesty, who's a founder of Poppy. And that's a disruptor in the floral industry. Um, so she'll share her uh, struggles and successes with all of you. Um, and we really just want to be a resource however we can. So from the PDF uh, two-dimensionally to our real lives 3D, uh, you can always feel free to reach out to us. I think you're muted, sorry. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> I was muted. I was sharing the PDF there. I hope everyone was able to, to see it. We are gonna be sending it out. It's a fantastic resource. I mean, you guys laid out like everything um, <laughs> that, that you need. So uh, we'll be sure to share that out with everyone, um, you know, as, as everything, uh, you know, in the thank you email tomorrow, as well as the link for the event. Um, I'm going to be dropping a bunch of, of links in, in the chat uh, for, for the upcoming events and, and everything else that we have going on. And uh, let me now, so thank you, Pete and, and Forceworth for being part of this. I mean, you guys are awesome. And uh, I know you guys have a presence in, in North Carolina, but I also know Ben is out in the Valley. Um, that's where we met him, actually. So I know you guys have a great network uh, across multiple cities and everything. So definitely use them as a resource. Um, if you're starting a company or have questions about any legal stuff, because it, it, it's better to figure it out early than having to worry about it later on. I'm sure you guys tell your uh, clients that all the time. But yeah, thank you so much, Pete, for being a part of this. And uh, we'll bring you back on at the end as well to, to give out the, the prize and, and share a little bit more about uh, it as well again. Uh, and next up, we have Roger from Realm Startup Advisory. Roger, are you here? Yeah, how's it going, Michael? Good to hey, see you. Roger. Great, great, um, fantastic. I'd uh, I'd love for 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 everyone who missed Roger did a a workshop last week uh, about how to win a pitch competition, which is up on YouTube. Uh, so hopefully the finalists watch that. But uh, so <laughs> I think it's a great resource just to have to come back to for for founders. And and I'd love to give you know everyone a background on who you are. I mean, you're, you're a founder yourself, but you're also an advisor and an investor in several startups. And I'd love for you to give some, some background on yourself and, and tell them a little bit more about Realm uh, Startup Advisory as well. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I really do appreciate being given this opportunity to sponsor this Black-led startup pitch competition because I'm a believer in it. I'm a minority uh, founder, two-time founder myself, uh, started a you know, capital management firm, uh, and then did uh, you know made the pivot to helping startups because I wanted to use my finance skill sets. So I came from that traditional financial services background, uh, and I recognized the need uh, for startups um, to focus on finances. But you know, it was one of those things where founders don't want to be buried in an Excel spreadsheet or you know going through a pitch deck, um, you know, or didn't know what to include in that. So what I started doing was compiling a pitch deck template which grew to a startup template that kind of focused on all aspects of capital raise. So I'm sure uh, in Yaki will be a good resource for me to use and for me to steer my clients toward uh, because it's vitally important. So what I help clients do is, you know, I'm your outsourced CFO, uh, outsourced finance person, remote, you know, fractional CFO, whatever you want to call me. I don't care about the title. I just care about getting stuff done and helping clients out, uh, whether it's, you know, scrubbing the business and looking at revenues, uh, potential new revenue lines, uh, looking at potentially uh, cutting costs, uh, those types of things. It's just stuff that I get in helping them charge more on the revenue side, which is always nice. Um, had you know that conversation earlier today with the client. So it's really all of those things. And yeah, I have that real world experience. People call me you know, the chief common sense officer. 
Uh, I've been in that room. I know what it's like. And I also know what it's like when you don't look like everyone else in that room, uh, where you may be an old white dude uh, and you're uh, coming from an underrepresented background, you're female or LGBTQ, whatever the case may be. Um, that's where I've tried to focus my business. And it's been absolutely tremendous, the outpouring of support and gratitude from clients um, and then meeting really great people and you know startups and founders like uh, like Antra. Uh, it's been a great um, you know over one year relationship now. <laughs> back when you can you know, see people in person, go to these fabulous networking events that Antra put on. Well, when I was in New York City, I'm actually coming to you from uh, beautiful Silicon Valley. Um, I'm actually going to be making the move to the West Coast to help clients uh, down in Southern California. So highly recommend any of the uh, West Coast people. Please reach out to me. You know, realmstartup.com is my uh, website. Uh, you could get my information from Michael or just look me up and, and just kind of ping me. I'm happy to share that startup template with anyone that requests it. I don't love just blasting it out to everyone, but if you uh, want to visit my website, there's a way to just sign up and uh, be put on that list and you will get that uh, startup template and you know, happy to have that conversation. And as far as what I'm going to be giving, uh, you know, I was super excited and happy to be a sponsor of this event. This is my second one uh, sponsoring. The other one was a female-led uh, startup kind of networking event, uh, which was great too. Um, so this is the second one. And what I'm going to be doing is offering uh, not only that startup template, but then also uh, a free consultation. And I guarantee you, uh, you know, all the final, I'm going to offer it to all the finalists. And in that hour or whatever that we you know, talk, uh, you're going to get a ton of value out of that. So I'm super looking forward to hearing all the pitches uh, and, you know, meeting some new founders and meeting some great people. Awesome. I appreciate it, Roger. And I just dropped his website link in there. Um, super thrilled to have you as part of this. Please use Roger as a resource. Um, Roger, if there's any other links and stuff, feel free to drop them in the chat for everybody. And, and, you know, Roger has a lot of connections in New York, but he's also out in California now too. So uh, coast to coast, um, he's a great uh, person to know in, in the startup ecosystem. So really appreciate you being a part of this, Roger, and your, I mean, really initiative to help, you know, minority founders and, you know, that, that's what this is all about. We're just here for support. We want to give founders an opportunity to make some money, get in front of investors and, and help them, you know, succeed easier. Uh, along the way, because, you know, the startup journey is crazy, as you know, and as uh, I'm sure all the startups that you work with, there's a lot of ups and downs. And our, our whole goal is to make it easier and more streamlined and give people a sense of community and support. So, and I know you're all for those things. So thank you so much for being a part of this. All right. Um, next up, um, we're going to do a, so one of our partners, Idea Motive, who is giving out a bunch of cash towards uh, tech. Uh, basically, they're an app and uh, development agency from Poland. Uh, Philip, who's part of their team, couldn't make it. Uh, we have a quick video that we're gonna share um, for them. Um, and then right after that, we're gonna get into the judges. They're gonna just introduce themselves real quick. And then we're gonna kick off the, the pitches here in probably about 10 minutes. So thank you guys for your patience. We have almost 300 people in here, so this is awesome. Please introduce yourselves. If you're coming in, uh, also make sure you meet yourself. Um, and yeah, thank you for being part of this. Uh, this has been an amazing like start. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited for, for the pitches. And um, let me share the video real quick and we'll get things, we'll get things moving. Um, everyone should be able to see my screen. And here is Philip from Idea Motive. All right, not sure why that's not working, <laughs> but uh, we're just gonna move on. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Idea Motive, their uh, app agency from Poland. They're giving away $1,000 to the winner, $500 to second place, and $250 to third place as credit towards their app, software, 
or any other website, whatever it is that they're uh, building out. Um, if you guys want or are having trouble finding tech talent, it's one of the hardest things to do as a startup, um, especially a tech startup. You're, you're trying to, you have this crazy idea and you're trying to build out your product. I mean, we went through this building out our app for the last year. Um, they're a great resource. They're out there in Poland. So they're in Europe, which they're going to be a lot cheaper than if you're going to be hiring developers here in the States. I'll, I'm going to drop a link here. Um, if you want, you can uh, book a call with them. They're going to be giving uh, discounts to all Entra uh, members. And let me see if I can find uh, the link here to their site and you can book a call with them uh, as well. And all right, I think, I think we're good. Um, so now let's, uh, let's introduce our judges. Uh, we have six amazing investors um, and, and judges that, that have uh, crazy resumes in of themselves. I'll let them share more about it. Um, first up, I'm gonna bring up Brandon Andrews. Brandon, are you here? And uh, I think I see Brandon. Hey man. Hey Michael. Great. Hey, Brandon. What's going on? How are you? Great to see you, man. I'm doing well. Doing well. Thanks so much for having me. Super excited to be here and to hear the pitches. Um, so I'm an entrepreneur, investor. I also um, run a nationwide casting tour for ABC Shark Tank. I'm specifically focused on finding more diversity. So more women, more people of color, and of course, more black founders. And so looking forward to seeing the pitches today and, and potentially having some folks get into the pipeline for the show. Awesome. Brandon, thank you so much for being a part of this. I know you've been part of some of our events in New York. Um, if anyone's been interested in Shark Tank, this is your guy. Um, and this is your, your chance for the people pitching uh, to get on Shark Tank. Uh, we're so thrilled to have you, man. And um, definitely drop any links. I know uh, you're doing a lot of stuff in the startup and entrepreneur space. Um, and, and would love to, you know, ha obviously, like, continue building our relationship, we definitely want to drive more and more people into, into Shark Tank and help more and more entrepreneurs succeed. So thank you so much for being a part of this event, man. It's good to see you again and glad you're here. Uh, next, next up, let's bring up, I think I've, I saw uh, Sydney Sykes. I think you're here. Um, Sydney, are you there? Yeah, I am. Hey. Thank you. Well, How thank you so you? much for organizing this. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. This is such a wonderful event. Always love to see diverse founders and, and give them a platform. Um, like I said, my name's Sydney. I'm one of the co-founders of Black VC, which is a nonprofit focused on empowering and supporting Black investors and increasing their representation in venture capital. Uh, it's an organization that has really fought for the past couple of years to make sure that all of this wealth that's generated by the venture industry goes to more diverse founders, goes into more diverse communities and more diverse hands. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm also an angel investor. So I'm excited to be here looking at a couple early startups and, and getting a feel for what's out there. So looking forward to seeing what everyone has to pitch. Amazing. Sydney, thank you so much for being a part of this. And, you know, it's ex exactly the reason why we're doing this and why, you know, we wanted you and the other people to be part of this. It's, you know, we're, we're really just wanting to be supportive for, you know, and give more opportunity to founders and, and give, you know, them a chance. I mean, we have 300 people here, so it's, it's a really cool, it's a really cool ch chance. And, um, you know, you have a fantastic network and you, you've built your own brand too, even, you know, with, with your company as well. So we're thrilled to have you and thank you so much for being a part of this event. Thank you. Got it. Okay, next up, uh, Dell Johnson. I think yeah, I see you here uh, from Backstage Capital. Dell, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing very well. How about yourself? Doing great. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being part of this. I mean, we've done some events and stuff together in New York. Uh, you know, it's good to see you again. And um, obviously, you know, you, Backstage, they're, you, know, you guys are pretty much the, you know, leaders in, in, this, in this space right now. I, I, <laughs> I think you got the hottest name in the game right now. Uh, we're super thrilled to have you on this event and being a part of this. Um, I'd love to have, you know, you share a little bit more about yourself and what you guys are doing with Backstage and um, a little bit more about your story. 
Yeah, lots of leaders here in this in this industry, definitely. And, and now, especially um, in recent times, more and more people stepping up. So it's really an exciting time. And, you know, hopefully there's some progress being made. Uh, but my name is Dell Johnson, um, Dell Johnson BC on Twitter. It seems like a, a couple people know me. Um, I'm a venture capitalist and an angel investor. Um, yes, the the most kind of famous fund that I that I've worked with is um, Backstage Capital, which is a pre-seed um, fund for underrepresented founders. That's Black founders, Latinx founders, LGBTQ founders, and all women founders. So anywhere worldwide, if, the, if that kind of fits your profile, I mean, I'm happy to kind of get a conversation going with you. Um, also, I have recently started branching out to do my own angel invested angel investing. So if you're a little bit too early for um, a backstage capital or NDVC, also happy to, to chat with you. Um, and then I also work with NDVC for the people who want just a little bit of capital and they think that they can, you know, bootstrap and, and take that up to, you know, multi-million dollar outcome. So my goal in this whole investing thing is to find every um, worthy company and connect them with an investment source. Um, so if I can do that for you, I'm, I'm happy to take, uh, have a conversation and uh, get the ball rolling. Amazing. I love that approach. I mean, that's right with how we're you know, trying to build out Entra and our whole goal is just connecting people and making it a little bit easier, a little bit less lonely, lonely and a little less hard to, to try to find the right investors and the right people to build, you know, build your company. So you know, I love what you're doing, man. I feel like every time I talk to you, you're, you're, you're doing more and more stuff. And, uh, you're one of my favorite followers on Twitter, Twitter too. <laughs> so definitely follow, follow Dell. He's, uh, he's always dropping some great stuff on, on Twitter. And, um, yeah, thank you for being a part of this, Dell. We appreciate it. Um, next up, uh, Sheila, are you here? Uh, I think I see you. Uh, do you want to, you know, please introduce yourself and, and share more about what you're working on with, uh, Zane? Sure. Hi. I'm, hi, everyone. I'm Shyla Nieves Bernie. I'm the founding and managing partner for Zane Venture Fund, I'm raising a $25 million, million dollar fund focused on diverse entrepreneurs who are creating tech enabled solutions, primarily here in the Southeast. I'm excited to see the talent tonight and, and, and really I'm excited to be here with everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Uh, I know it was kind of a late ad, but we were pumped when you uh, decided decided to join. I mean, it was a perfect fit. So, uh, when it comes to founders, I'm there to support. Yeah, we're glad you're here, and uh, yeah, thank you for being a part of this. I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts on, on everything that's going on, and hopefully, we can keep doing more stuff together down the line as well. Absolutely, sure. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. And um, let's bring up, last but not least, Mac the VC, one of my other favorite followers on Twitter. Uh, Mac, are you here? I'm right here, man. How are you? How's it going? It's going okay. How's everybody doing? Um, so I'm Mac the VC on Twitter. A um, little background on myself. I'm a software engineer by trade, two-time startup founder, one exit, one failed company. So I've, I've seen both sides of it. Um, the one that failed is the one that I raised money for, go figure. Uh, I currently work for the Maryland Technology Development Corporation. We're essentially the investment arm for the state of Maryland. It was here in 2017. I started the first state-backed pre c fund for women and minorities in the country. Um, it's the first and only at this point. Hopefully we get to change that designation at some point. Uh, and if you follow me on Twitter, you might see that uh, I'm working on something new, uh, have a big announcement coming in the near future. So be on the lookout for that. Oh, I was muted. Awesome. Thank, we're glad to have you here, Mac. I mean, you, you had the first, uh, I, and, I, I, and I wish more states would jump on the board. I hope that you can just blow everything out of the water and then every other state's just going to jump on. Uh, but you're, you're, you're a real trendsetter and, you know, uh, leader in this space. I think, um, I think the government should start helping more startups and, and figure out, out ways to help more, uh, you know, more companies in the early stages, just getting things moving. Uh, I think it's a really important thing. So, you know, I'm glad that you set that up and I'm glad you're here. And I think you have a lot of knowledge in the space, also being a founder yourself. So thank you so much for being a part of it. And I, I almost forgot our, our final judge, Michael Tam uh, from Craft Ventures. Michael, are you here? I think I saw him. Sorry, I was muted. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Thanks for being a part good, of it. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, sorry about 
Sorry oh. about the delay on my end. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm currently at Craft. Uh, we're a sector agnostic fund, uh, but with an interest in, in SaaS and marketplaces. Um, the stage, we invest C to Series B at a high level. Um, we're, we're currently investing out of our second fund, so we're a new brand. Uh, the second fund is a little over 500 million. Uh, we started late 2017. Um, the GPs, they've been in, in, in tech for, for some time. Uh, former founders, they started companies like PayPal, Yammer, StubHub, Boingo, Earthlink, and Cloud Kitchens. Um, I, myself, former operator and founder, I helped launch an online native brand 2010 that Procter & Gamble acquired last year. I was at Uber for a few years in business ops and uh, just here to find interesting companies. Awesome. We're, we're, we're glad to have you. And yeah, David Sachs is one of my favorite. Uh, I, I, I don't even know if I would call him. I mean, he's an investor founder, but you know, he's just a great person in the startup space to, I, I try to take in as much information from him as possible. So I can't imagine what it's like working with him. Um, you know, being one of the founders of PayPal and Yammer, uh, he's fantastic. So we're thrilled that you're part of this and we have to do a shout out to, to Sydney Thomas from Precursor uh, VC who introduced us. Originally, we reached out to Sydney to speak and she, she wanted to uh, offer up a, a spot, her spot to Michael because she, she really wanted um, you know, him to be a part of it. So we're, we're thrilled to have you and I think you can give a lot of insights into these startups and, and founders that we have here. So um, really appreciate you being a part of this. Thanks. Yep. And okay. I think we're ready to kick things off. Um, we have, it's a little after six, so we're, we're pretty good on schedule. Um, judges, you should have gotten the Google sheet, uh, document to tally your scores. If you haven't got that or don't have the link to that, uh, please just message me privately and I'll, I'll, I'll share that link for you. Um, that's where we'll be tallying up all the scores in, in the background and, and we'll be um, you know, announcing the winners uh, at the end. Uh, again, all the startups are going to get five minutes to pitch. I'm going to do a stopwatch timer. We're going to be pretty strict on, on the time frame. So I'll start clapping at five minutes uh, to wrap it up so that it's fair for all the, all the startups. Uh, they're also going to get around five minutes for a judges Q and A as well. Obviously we're not gonna cut them off if they're answering a question or if the judges wanna ask a final question, uh, but just be mindful of that. And um, you know, let, let's, let's get things started and let, let's give out a thousand dollars and let's give out some cool prizes and stuff. Um, thank you all for joining. Um, and the first startup is going to be Undock. I, I believe Nash, um is is the one going to be presenting for undock nash are you are you here can you hear me yep i'm presenting can everyone see the screen yeah yeah i can see the screen uh i can see you how are you doing man i'm doing good good to we're, see you again we're, we're, we're pumped to have you yes definitely um let me get the stopwatch all set up and then i'll get five minutes on the clock and uh you can you can get started whenever you're ready sure the way we work has drastically changed overnight. It's always been hard to schedule a meeting, but now you can't even drop by someone's desk. Getting time with your own team feels challenging as meeting with someone at another company or another continent. It's time for a fundamentally different approach. Undock helps people instantly find time to meet without ever looking at a calendar. It's why we have over 1,800 people on our wait list from companies like Stripe, Uber, LinkedIn, Robinhood, and over 40 DC firms. Like you, they're all tired of the endless back and forth and playing calendar tag. We've been talking about this all wrong. I'm Nash, CEO and co-founder of Undock. Welcome to Predictive Scheduling. Predictive Scheduling works like double complete. Say you're arranging a meeting in email. As you're typing, Undocs usually prefer meeting times instantly. These predictions take into account what we know about you, your availability, your purchases, and your scheduling behavior. We can pair this with everyone else on the email. It doesn't matter if they work at another company or if they're on Microsoft or you're on Gmail. 
even make predictions that the other person doesn't have on the map. It works like magic, and it's always learning to read dates, to read intent. It's even learning to read any calendar page. It'll do the work for you without you ever leaving your inbox. And we do this without giving up privacy or control. This is incredibly hard. With our patent pending AI, we've cracked the code. It's a breakthrough in tech, methodology, and user experience. And it's working. Our power users create 70% of the meetings we have every single day. This is even before the obvious network effects at play. This speaks to the speed and efficiency of OnDoc. Take Zoe. Arranging meetings with her global team, contractors, and clients used to take days. So she decided to try OnDoc, and now she schedules in a matter of seconds. Within one week, 13 of her coworkers joined, and she continues to make referrals to her network. We provide value. They provide virality just at the beginning. Undock is going to own the calendar and everything around meetings. We've already enabled the collaborative agenda and note-taking capabilities that overlays on any conferencing platform, including ours. So imagine all of your meetings magically curated by predictive scheduling. We charge 10 to $50 per user for our premium scheduling meeting documentation features. And the uh, predictive scheduling is free. And we know how to monetize. From our legacy voice and conferencing offerings, we have 230,000 in annual recurring revenue. And I'm excited to announce that we just launched our new meeting platform at undock.com. The timing is right and the opportunity is huge. Companies spend $20 billion a year to have meetings. And it shouldn't surprise you that since COVID, online meetings are up 2,000%. My team and I were already building in office and remote work. I'm a developer and designer who's built multiple telecom businesses, grossing over 25 million in revenue. My co founder David, spent six years at Zynga. I mean, their data driven approach to growth, virality, and performance marketing, along with our VP of engineering, my college roommate. And for our world-class engineers, we built a 10 better meeting experience directly into your workflow. So if you feel stuck fiddling with a bunch of tools to schedule, host, and document a single meeting, we invite you to join us at Undoc on our mission to coordinate when work happens. Thank you much. And sign up at undoc.com today while the signups are open. Awesome. Thank you, Nash. That was awesome. We had a little, uh, it was a little choppy, but I was able to hear basically uh, everything. I think um, everyone was able to get um, all of the presentation. And, oh, my video is off. Uh, sorry. Uh, we, we should be good. Uh, judges, do you have, uh, ho hopefully, all of that was able, you guys were able to get all of that uh, smoothly. Um, you guys have any questions for Nash and, you know, whoever wants to kick it off can, can start. So I, I got a question. So you mentioned you had a wait list of 1800 folks. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your go to market strategy and how you're thinking about your growth and getting customers, right? Like, so how do you go about that? What's your plan? Sure. Uh, we're targeting specifically project managers for a couple of reasons. Number one, their scheduling complexity is of the highest, and they meet with people in the company, small teams, meetings, they meet with contractors, external clients, and they also have a bunch of users in their mix. So their scheduling complexity is really difficult, but then that also makes them a natural uh, candidate for increasing our value. So that's where we're starting in that vertical. They don't have a solution that works for them in line and email, they don't have a solution that works in both directions, they don't have a solution that works in groups, and they don't have a solution that works for external parties. So that's why we're starting with them. Hey, it's Shyla. I have a question. So, Nash, I didn't see your, any competitors listed in your deck. Did I miss that? Or does it, did it go by really, really quickly? Uh, I, I threw a little bit of shade in there at the competitors, but yeah, the, the, the main, the major differentiation between our, our platform and the others, at least in the scheduling space is number one, we are not a scheduling platform. We're a platform 
behind all the existing scheduling platforms. So we are uh, in the business of category creation here. We're making the first vertically integrated meeting solution for skin documentation and conferencing. Okay. And and where's the where's the data coming from? Um, I'm I'm guessing that it's it's plugging into the calendars on at least one person's um, side. Um, do both people have to have the uh, technology operational for it to be able to interoperate with both of their calendars, or how, and if not, how exactly are you making that work? So there's three ways it can work. If everyone is on the platform, it works instantly. It works magically. It takes into account everyone's preferences, availability instantly in line to your calendar, or constantly processing it, making decisions about when you accept a meeting or propose a meeting, and then we present that to you in line in the email. So that's the first scenario. There's a second scenario where the other person doesn't have a doc, and they can either temporarily sync the calendar, or send them a calendar link to book, or the other option is you just can you manage your normal workflow with a person that doesn't have the platform, and we help you again, instantly find person and you can insert clickable links for them to uh, pick and we also do some inferences on the background the model is, is getting stronger but we can look at their time zone so you can set a slot that works we can add their previous meeting history with you and we can also look for network conflicts so we'll propose meeting times that we know don't work across our entire network sorry so it was i think i may have missed it the preferences um for the attendees are all self-submitted I, I didn't hear that part. The um, how, and things are how, all self. How do you so, catch um, his, his video is um, breaking and, up for me? I don't know if that's for everyone else, but I can't hear him. Sorry. How, how about now? I can hear is you it, now. So okay, great. How, how do how do you capture preferences, and then what if they dynamically change? Uh, we capture preferences on sign up in two ways. You answer a quick survey; it takes twenty seconds to sign up. You tell us what your blocks are, your times are, and then you can go and set the granular settings. But then we also do a historical analysis of your previous time history, not just looking for when you've had meetings, but we reverse engineer history from the calendar started and look at all the decisions you made. And then we look at the decisions you made after inserting the times that we proposed to you, information algorithm for certain times as you go along. So you put a profile, you set the set, and you all use uh, in the background, machine learning. Can I ask about retention? Uh, it's kind of early. We were in a very small private beta up until about three weeks ago. Um, 15, uh, 15, sorry, 14 retention right now is about 67%, which is pretty good. Um, and we just opened up the platform last week and 600 uh, sign up. We're approaching a uh, thousand users in the platform. And we didn't invite all the people from the wait list just yet. We just kind of temporarily opened it up to get some people in there. And then we have a strategy for those people on the wait list, like the Stripes and the Ubers and whatnot. So it seems like you have a fairly sizable team. So walk me through, you know, um, what your MR looks like versus your burn right now. Or, so or, or our, words I need to get to. Okay, so for the first uh, six months of the year, our burn was only 7,000. Um, we have aggressively started hiring after our, we were an accelerator. So after we uh, graduated the accelerator, we had a ton of vendors. Uh, we're closing the run in a couple of days here. So uh, at first, <laughs> significantly in the next week or so. Increase. And what's your um, MRR and where do you plan to be three months from now? Okay, our MRR is currently at 19,000. Um, we're turning on a free platform primarily, and that's where we're focusing on growth there. Uh, we are projecting to get to 2 million ARR by the end of next year. Okay, so, so you're gonna be free. How long do you, like, what's the goal to hit before you turn it from free to paid and how much of a drop off do you expect with that? So we're not, we're not gonna switch it from free to paid. We have premium tiers and premium functionality. So about 70% of the entire stack. So 70% of the scheduling is free. There's power users that need more scheduling uh, functionality and granularity in the settings. We charge for that. 
There's power users that need better control of their uh, documentation. We charge for that. And also there's data retention and there are usage limits. So let's say you're using the platform and we set a 50, me 50 meeting limit per month. You get to two and a half weeks, you hit that 50 minute limit or 50 meeting limit. You're gonna have to pay $10 per month to continue using Undoc. So you can say, I'm gonna go back my manual way, spend hours scheduling or pay $10 per month. So that means you're going to limit the amount of meetings people can schedule to get them to sign on, but your competitors. It's going, it's going to be, it's going to be considerably high. We're looking at the data and we're going to get to about the 5%, uh, okay. the 5% highest power users to have them convert to the, the paid plan. What was the decision to do that versus your competitors who let people be free and for unlimited amount of meetings up until a certain, you know, until except for certain functionality. Yeah, we're, we're definitely still looking at the data before we make that decision on what that number is, but there's, there's a certain inflection. We provide so much value beyond, above and beyond what our competitors do, even just from the scheduling standpoint. Like, again, we work so fast, we work in line, we work in your email, we work in groups, we work inbound, we work on mobile, we work everywhere. None of those platforms do that. And a lot of the stuff that they do, we already offer for free. So from a one-to-one -one perspective, a Calendly or X.AI, when you start to get into their paid tiers, like multiple calendars and all this other stuff, you got to wait for free. So we're providing an exceptional amount of value for that. And if you're a person that has 50, 60 meetings per month, you're going to pay them dollars and not spend 14, 15 hours. That's simply going to work for you. How have your um, users to date found you? 99.9999% organic, mostly through Twitter and a few through my LinkedIn. We only spent about $300 in paid spend just to figure out what CAC would be. And that's a, a pretty good number right now. We're still working on uh, what our creative looks like, but our conversion on our landing page are between 30 and 40%, which is uh, incredible for us without doing any iteration on that landing page. All right. All right. That uh, that wraps things up. We, we want to get on to the other pitches, but uh, Nash, thank you so much, man. You, you crushed it. Um, we'll give it a, a few minutes here before we start the, the next pitch um, to uh, have the judges tally up their scores. Um, you guys all should ha have the score sheet. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm just checking it right here to make sure that everyone um, is tallying up their scores. If, if you aren't, you guys, all, all the judges have their own tab at the bottom of the spreadsheet. Um, so you guys should be able to tally them up in there and, and make sure you number them one through five um, on, on, each, uh, on each category. Um, we'll give it a few minutes here as, as the judges go through that. If you're having trouble uh, locating it, uh, just message me privately. And, and we can get that up. But it seems like Brandon got it. Um, Del, do you need the, I'm not sure if you need the link I can share with you. No, I, I have, I, I'm doing it on, on my own and then I'll put all the numbers in okay. at the end. Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, Max got it. Okay, Michael, good. Sydney, okay. Okay, great. Um, okay, next up we have Susan from RunMits. Susan, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> hey, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing really good. Thanks for being a part of this. I hope you're, you're all set and, and you're ready, uh, ready to pitch. Everything I'm, good? Uh, I, I'm going to try. <laughs> this is, I'm going to be honest. This is the first time I've done this type of pitching. I usually do just talking, so. Hey, well, um, it, it's so. mostly talking, so you'll be good at it. <laughs> um, well, uh, if you want, uh, can you uh, share your screen and then let me set okay. the uh, on, let me, stopwatch here. And um, let me go back one second. Uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, the judges are still screen. filling out their scorecard. Um, okay. for, for everyone wondering, yes, this is recorded. Um, we will be uh, putting this out up on YouTube um, for, for, for everyone to, to rewatch or, or whatever if they want. Um, if, if 
you know, um, so that so that you can you know go go back through this. Um, and if anyone, I, I'm sure I, I dropped the YouTube uh, in there earlier, but you guys should be able to see it. I also apologize if people saw. It looked like we had uh, an unwanted guest that that came in. Um, so, uh, but we should be good now. And I turned back on the uh, waiting room, so we shouldn't have any more interruptions. And uh, okay, Susan, I see your screen. So, Yay! <laughs> and um. stopwatch ready. And um, whenever uh, you're good to go, whenever you're ready. Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. I am Susan Clayton, and I am the owner inventor of White Paws Run Mitt. Um, White Paws, as an avid runner, I could never find mittens or gloves that kept both my fingers and my thumbs warm when I was training in cold weather. So I invented one. White Paws Run Mitt is a patented thumbless convertible mitten designed for runners, walkers, outdoor sports enthusiasts. It also has a palm, I mean a pocket in the palm for a hand warmer. So if you train in really cold weather, more extreme temperatures, you can make them even warmer. Because our temperatures fluctuate when you run, you start with the mitten all on, you flip the top to cool down, because after a few miles, you start to warm up. After a few more miles, about nine or 10 miles, you get really warm, so you can push the mittens all the way down, unlike traditional mittens or gloves. You don't have to worry about fumbling to get them back on. You don't have to worry about putting them in. But what, what happens a lot of times is we stick them in our pockets. We stick them, for women, we stick them down our bra, sports bra. And then you realize about 10 miles back, you've dropped one. And now you're flipping back and forth between your gloves that you do have. So with white paws, run mitts, you just flip them back on, flip them off, depending on how you're feeling. Um, we launched white paws in 2016. We've had a traction growth of about 20 to 30% in sales over the last three, three, four years. Our last year though, unfortunately we started to slow down. So I felt like I needed to do something more than just what I was doing. I felt like I had um, exhausted all of my network. So 2020, I was focusing more on um, press, brand awareness. So I've worked really hard on getting a lot of press over the last year. Uh, due to COVID-19, I was sitting around. I also own, this is my second business. My other business is I own a hair salon and we were shut down completely for three months. So I was doing nothing and I, my new manufacturer was helped me to develop a face mask that's geared towards runners. That has put me into a market that I was not used to being in because I'm so used to the summer, I mean, winter market. So now I'm in the summer market. So people who would never have even seen me before are um, checking out the mitt, I mean, the mask, and now they're going and checking out the mitts too. Um, they have been flying off the shelf. I cannot keep them in stock, we also just got a mention today in Runner's World, what is, which is like the holy grail for Runner's Magazine. And we are one of the top, you know, one of the mittens, I mean, masks that they say for Runner's. Um, uh, there's a big outdoor sports apparel market and White Paws Run Mitts is only one of two black owned companies in the um, whole US. I just found this out. We were focused also in outdoor retail. Um, the week of, uh, they have a weekly magazine and on July 27th, we were featured. Um, our demographics are runners, walkers, um, outdoor sports fans, moms and dads who are, whose kids play soccer and you're sitting on the sidelines. If you're tailgating, they're great for that. They're great for any sort of outdoor sports. Um, our market is usually people who, who run, basically that was who our target was at the beginning, but we've also branched out and find that other sports like our product. Um, we look for people who are living a healthy lifestyle. And, um, our competition, we have um, like Brooks, uh, Solomon, Nike, Under Armour, but because of our patented unique style, we set ourselves away from the competition. Uh, we price about the same as they are, but our margins right now are about, before we have two different fabrics, we have a fleece 
and our margins are about 50, 51%. And then we have a wind and water resistant fabric and our margins are about 57% on that. Um, right now, I'm just trying to uh, focus on e-commerce. I found that when I was, wasn't getting the kind of traction I was looking for in trying to work and to get into stores. So I have been focusing in 2020 on just my e-commerce. Um, let's see. <laughs> so anyway, so I want Right Pause Run Mitts to become that one mitten that when you turn to for hand warmth, you think of White Paws Run Mitts. I want to become that brand. So that's what I'm um, trying to build with White Paws Run Mitts. Thank you, everyone. All right. Perfect timing. <laughs> um, I thought that was great. Uh, and a lot of people in the uh, chat were, were loving uh, this idea. So um, it seems like you have a lot of fans here. Um, Thank you. Let's get into some Q and A. What questions do you have for Susan? And we can kick it off with whoever wants to to start. Hey, it's Shyla. I'll go first. Um, so yeah, great, great product. But I didn't know what your product was in the beginning. I think because I know you focus a lot on the mid, and maybe that was your original product. But it seemed like you pivoted to um, the mask. But then it's like you you're still promoting run mitts. So is it? So what's the what's the product, I guess, at the end? Is it the mat or is it the the the, the masks? So the um the mitts is always gonna be our main product because that's our you know, that's the core of the business to start with. I started with the mask because I was sitting home for three months and I needed something to do. Mm -hmm. And it just took off. It was I when I started it, it was like I'm sitting around, I have nothing to do. I thought I'd sell a hundred. I think I'm up to like 2000 now. So, and it just keeps, it's like every time I've had an order come in, I mean, I sold out today and had to reorder for, you know, from the comeback in. I, it wasn't one of these things where I was looking to sell masks. Mm -hmm. I was trying to build the mitten company right. and the mask just became part of it because of COVID. And right because of even with just like the whole black lives matter and more black business awareness, people have been seeking me out because of, I am one of the few sportswear companies that in the country. So. Mm -hmm. So I would just really tighten that story up in the beginning. Cause okay. if, if, I mean, if, and it's great that you pivoted doing COVID-19 because that's what we want to hear. We want to hear how are you going to have your company in this new normal, which we don't even know what's going to be yet. And it seems like yours was almost solved for you, right? So there's a product out there that you could easily sort of make and take off. But I would love to know that like in your storytelling, because I think that's what we want to hear. The fact that you, you know, yeah. no things weren't that important, but you, you, you made something else and this thing is sort of taking off. Um, mm -hmm. so, I'm sorry. Just, I'm I would just want to tighten it up a little bit to say that is major. Okay. But good Thank job. you. Great job. Yeah. I mean, I, and and I think because you're so, this is probably personal, but like masks, they they basically, you know, I get winded whenever I'm wearing one. So I would love to know what your technology is that folks can actually run in a mask and not feel, you know, that pressure like they're gonna faint or something because of the mask. Um, it's a very lightweight fabric. Um, it's called Tricot. Tricot, and so it's a fabric that you use for out for like sportswear for um, bathing suit kind of weather, you know, but very, very lightweight. So it's stretchy and it's, so it's, I'll show it's you real cool. quick. <laughs> this was a new color. So it's very, very, I mean, it weighs like next to nothing and it's very stretchy. So because it's so lightweight, you can put it on and it fits tight to your face. If it's tight to your, you know, you can adjust the straps because I just tied knots in it. Okay. But um, it's very lightweight, so it's very easy to breathe through. And I focus, I promote it to like people who are going to the gym because now even you have to wear a mask inside gym. So it's great for those two. Okay. All right. So yeah, I would just mention the technology in that as well. Okay. But good job. <laughs> Thank you. Susan. Um, Hi, Brandon. <laughs> hey, hope you're doing well. Um, <laughs> Congrats on successfully pivoting during the pandemic. Great to hear that you've been able to keep the, the business going. Question is, if you were to get funding 
whether it's the thousand dollars from this competition or funding from one of us as an angel investor, where do you put that money? Are you going to invest in the original um, mitten vertical or are you going to try to continue to take advantage of the moment with the new vertical with, with the mask we're, we're, in terms of your um, business strategy for the next you know, three to six months? Um, where would you put funding if, if you got it immediately? Um, I would put it into more into the mitten because the mass, I, I, or if I was going to focus on more, if using the money to use for more mass, I think I would focus more on the winter product because this was just, I feel like this is a fluke and I don't know how long this is going to last. So the mittens is definitely my core product, um, trying to get better, you know, work on better fi fabricing, try to get, um, the margins even lower so that I could, if somebody did want to sell in a store, I could get them in there. So I would, I think that still the mittens is like my core product. It's like my baby. I don't really want to try to, I, if I'm going to branch out, it's going to be like the mittens is the main thing and then side things into it. So maybe like for the winter, instead of like just a face mask gator so that, you know, it covers your neck and your face so that you're more warm in the winter. I don't, I don't see myself continuing with just the face mask unless COVID continues on and this becomes like the new face, this becomes a new thing. But it was always the the mitten. And someone asked me that the other day and I was like, well, Bombas makes the socks. Can I just have this? So I think this, and, and even probably trying to get the mittens in different fabrications. So it's not so heavy. There's like a lightweight, a medium weight, and even if I started making them, that's not the patented mitten, just a regular mitten to add to the line. I got I you. Like mittens. You can tell I like mittens. <laughs> and is there anything that you've learned over the past uh, six months of 2020 that you could apply um, to the next season for your mittens after you had the downturn um, last year in terms of uh, revenue? Um, I think that the, what I've learned was just trying to get more brand awareness. Like I've done a lot, I've had a lot of press um, and I think that was the problem. I didn't know how to get the word out and getting the word out was getting more people to know about it. And I was having struggling with that. So I did help have instilled a friend of mine who is, uh, you know, does marketing and stuff and she helped me to get the press that I'm getting now. So I think that just getting the word out, you know, sometimes that's, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brandon. Hey, Susan, great, great to hear what you're working on. Super exciting. Okay. Um, hopefully you can hear me through my phone audio. I was having a bit of computer problem. Okay, I, I'm curious, a lot of the consumer companies that I've worked with, I've seen them really run into issues with, um, copying, copycatting, and frankly, especially with Amazon and a lot of other companies, direct consumer businesses frequently get their, you know, their branding as well as just the actual product and duplicates um, replicated super similarly online. I was wondering if you've run into this issue and how you're prepared for the market to heat up one from a competitor standpoint, but also in the case of copycatting, which can be uh, pretty common. Um, I think when I, um, I'm still very, very young and with this company. And when I started, one of the things, the reasons I focused on trying to get the patent was because I knew that the, the, the process, I mean, what it is, it's so simple. It's not like it's something that can't be easily copied. That's why I focused on before I even launched to have the patent. And I'm hoping that that keeps me from, you know, and I want to be to the, I want it to be to the point where when you see a mitten like that, you instantly think of me and opposed to this is a copycat so that, you know, like even when we can like look at like Spanx. Spanx is a huge product, but there's so many other companies. But when you think of that, that um, product, you think of Spanx, even though you might be buying somebody else's product, but initially, well, now she's a million, billionaire. So she doesn't care if she's copied because you're still buying her Spanx. So I want to get to that point where you're saying, oh, this is a run, white paws mitten. I like this product. 
and you know it becomes like that household name so you don't think about you know even if somebody does copy it i'm still and i was one thing that i did hear from sarah she was like if by the time you get to that point where people copy you you're you're big enough that people right now nobody cares about me <laughs> maybe you know i want them to care about me when they when they start copying me it's because i've become so big that they they want to copy me let's hope that gets <laughs> Rooting for you, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Any more questions before we uh, before we move on to the next startup? <laughs> Susan doesn't want any more. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. All right, Susan. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, really appreciate it. Um, and we're going to give the judges a few more minutes here to tally up their scores. And then we're going to have uh, Tremaine from Bulk uh, come on and uh, pitch his startup. Tremaine, are you, are you there? Hello, hello, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, yep, we can hear you. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, share your screen. Okay, fantastic. I know you had some issues with the um your computer so I, I i'm not sure if we're going to be able to see you or not but I, we can hear you fine so that it's all good <laughs> um, yeah my my computer doesn't agree with zoom so here we are no worries um i think we're good let me see if um okay i see your screen um and let me check the scoring sheets real quick Mostly wrapped up here. All right, I think we're good to move on. All the judges good to go. Okay. Um, looks like Mac might have just been. Mac, are you back on? I'm I know. Back. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure. It looked like you got uh, removed somehow or, or something, but um, you you got the the whole last pitch, right? Yeah, I got the whole last pitch. I didn't get to ask the question I wanted, but it's all good. We're good. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, Susan Susan got got off off the hook with a uh, with a question, <laughs> um, but um, okay, we'll, we'll wait a second to tally up your scores, and then let me get the stopwatch ready for Tremaine in bulk, and we'll we'll kick things off here. All right, Jermaine, I'm ready whenever you are. All right, perfect. All right, guys. Hello, my name is Jermaine Grant, and I'm the co-founder of Bulk, the weight gain app. And I promise we built a solution for an actual problem. So let's get into it. So the type of people that usually download our app are people that have been on a journey to gain weight and have constantly come up short. At Bulk, we take a holistic approach to the solution with our three-part system we coined Break, Build, and Bulk. With Break, we focus on hypertrophy, which is the breakdown of your muscles during exercise to so provide a personalized workout program to achieve this. Then we have Build, which is the process of rebuilding your muscles by providing a calorie tracking system and a meal plan to make sure that you meet calories and macronutrient uh, goals that Bulk has provided. And then the last one is, is Bulk, uh, which is the result of breaking down and rebuilding your muscles over and over again. And over time, this ultimately results in muscle growth. Now our audience is very niche, yet it's very large, diverse, and unaddressed by any other app on the market currently. There are a number of reasons why someone might want to Bulk which is one, they struggle keeping weight due to uh, super fast metabolism, or two, they're a high school athlete without the proper access to training, and three, they're taking medications that can cause muscle wasting as a side effect, and four, they just wanna feel good in their own skin. Whatever the case is, everybody knows someone that needs this app. Think about it, who do you know? And while our focus has been the United States, We've garnered an audience in 53 different countries across the globe. Um, from our launch in 2016, 
we've uh, totaled uh, 70,000 users. Um, and these are some other metrics that we've captured as well. Um, and this is all without any marketing. It's all been organic. Um, at launch, our app was free to all users. But last year, we implemented a freemium premium model for our app, which costed $4.99 a month and $29.99 annually. We have made $23,000 in a short year since launching this premium offering. And today, our monthly recurring revenue is $1,200 with a consistent 30% month over month growth. And we know that this, we can improve this number significantly. Um, in the first half of this year, we saw a 2.7% conversion rate and we're up 35% from last year. Uh, being that this was a KPI that we focused on tremendously this year, we've actually had two UI UX audits done on the app on how effective our app currently converts. And the findings are both pretty consistent. We offer way too much for free and that with a few design adjustments, we can see a lift in conversion by four to five percent. And as for our retention, it's at a healthy 74% uh, showing our premium users have brand loyalty. So as I mentioned, we believe that we can significantly increase, uh, increase our revenue um, by growing our user base with paid advertisement. We've done a lot of A-B testing around uh, advertisements, paid ads on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and the findings are that um, with, a real, with a proper amount of funding, uh, we can, we, we're pumped that we can 10X this current volume. And if we continue on with our UI UX improvement, we, uh, we think, well, we know we can double our conversion rate. So we've conducted a bottoms up analysis. We found that there is 6.52 million people in the US who have signed up for gym memberships that have indicated a goal outside of weight loss. And based on our highest offering of $29.99, it leaves us at a potential market of 196 million in the US annually. And as, in terms of our competition, our biggest advantage is specificity. Because we focus on weight gain, we are uniquely positioned to build features that are really specific uh, for our issue that we're solving in this app. Making this app feel more personalized for other people, um, unlike the dominating fitness apps in the market right now, like MyFitnessPal, Nike Trainer, um, Training Club, and 8Fit. We believe that with the access to funding, we can be just as dominant as these uh, other players. Our next goal in the next five years is to dominate this market and then attack other fitness niches. And we believe that if from that position that uh, we've been a good place to be acquired. Uh, these are some comparables for the last, uh, in the last five years some similar companies to ours that have been acquired. And our exit strategy is pretty consistent with these other apps, acquisition. So we have a great team behind us. Um, one of our uh, great advisors is Salama Mohammed. Uh, he's a well-respected thought leader in the exercise science community, a trainer, a nutritionist, and an influencer with almost 100,000 uh, following. And he's helped us tremendously by turning exercise science uh, equations and concepts um, into our algorithm. In addition, my founder, my co-founder and I have went through uh, G-Beta and Startup Boost accelerators in, based in Detroit, which has given us the tools to, uh, to scale this company where we think we can get it. And this is us, the founders. This is Caleb Diaz, my co-founder, and again, I'm Tremaine Grant. We designed and built this app together because we're passionate about it, so it hasn't been much overhead for us. We were both software engineers. Um, we were former software engineers from General Motors. We both have experience launching globally scaled applications. In addition to our knowledgeable advisor, we're both NAFC certified in personal training and nutrition. And that's it. I just want to thank everybody for being on the call and hope you guys are staying healthy. And um, our ask is that these are the people that we're looking for currently. Um, support us <laughs> by reading from the App Store really would help us. And we're raising. So anyone that has- Great job. Key, I got to cut you off there. Great job. Okay. Great job. Uh, no, that was fantastic. Every, everyone, uh, yeah, sorry. I, I, I wanted to, I just got to be fair to every, uh, every, every contestant. Um, we had a lot of people in the comments that were uh, saying that they, they actually need your app. So, um, <laughs> it, it, it a great job. Um, and we'll can you, you see me now? Because I switched yeah. to my iPad. Yep, yep. I can see you now. Oh. Yep. Um, and, and we'll open it now up to the judges. So uh, whoever wants to kick it off with some questions for Tremaine. So I had a quick question. Uh, you mentioned that you want to put more money into paid advertising. So can you tell us what your CAC is? You know, how much does it cost for you to acquire a customer? And what you think the, what do you perceive the lifetime value to be? I know it's still early on for you to figure that kind of stuff out, but can you give us a sense of it so we understand the breakdown of the money? 
Right. So as I mentioned, we, um, we've been doing a lot of A-B testing around that, actually. So our current CAC is a, for a premium acquisition, we're at about $9.50 uh, for that premium acquisition. And we've, we're seeing an average lifetime value of our users are at about $42.50. So we know that we're, sort of, we're netting about $33, uh, 33 or $32 right now. Um, so we know that if we put the right amount of investment in there, we're going to get, we're going to see that return on our investment. And you said you've been AB testing it. So how much money have you put into those AB tests so far? We've put about, uh, about a thousand, about one to $2,000 in AB testing outside of hiring. So we actually hired uh, a marketer uh, temporarily just to figure out, to lock down those numbers that was running our ads for us, testing different uh, variants of that ad to make sure that we could get uh, a good, accurate reading on what uh, that, that CAC was. Can you talk a little bit about your, um, your total addressable market and how you came to calculate that? I mean, I would see that one of the um, arguments against this company being, say, venture backable might be that, you know, how many people are out there who actually want to gain weight as opposed um, to, to lose it. So I just want to see what your motivation is on growing this outside of um, what some people would think of as a small niche and, and how you're thinking about, you know, acquiring company, uh, sorry, acquiring customers as the amount of people who want to gain weight are, you know, diminishes because they're all on the platform already. Right. Um, so we it started out as just being a passion project for my co-founder and I, to be honest. Um, we, we built it and we, we threw it on the App Store and we just started seeing immediate traction. So um, just to give you some context, I've, um, I've built probably five apps now that are, that are on the App Store. Um, and I work, uh, I work with Gordy Parker. So we have like, I work on their, uh, their mobile app. So the numbers that we saw when we first released the app was like, was something that we, I hadn't experienced with any other app. The traction that we saw in the first month, we we're getting 50 downloads organically a day without putting any paid ads. So like that number that I showed you was, has been all organic where we have our, our um, competitors that, have, that are putting in six figure um, budgets for their ad campaign. So that was one, that was one facet of it. That was one aspect. The other was the, that bottoms up uh, analysis that I, that I talked about. So when looking at the, the numbers of people that, um, that have gym memberships, as well as the fact that, um, yeah, the number that have gym memberships, as well as the fact that uh, the people that, the ones that we found were, their goal was specifically indicating that they were not uh, losing weight, um, was at 6 million uh, individuals, so in the US. So we, we, uh, we calculated based on our, our highest offering of 29.99, and that number was, um, how we got to our $196 million market value. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yep. Hi, Jermaine. Um, just two questions for you, one quick and, and the second a little bit longer wind. Um, first, why don't you know the retention period that, or the time period for your retention numbers? Um, and then the second question was, you know, I get really excited about focusing on specific customer audiences, uh, especially when you're able to like really meet all of their needs. I'm curious if you thought about the other needs of this demographic, people who are trying to focus their, their health gains and their work gains on gaining weight. Absolutely. So um, when we first started it again, uh, my co-founder and I started it as a passion project. So we built the app for ourselves. We literally put it out and we put what we wanted in it. And what we noticed was in that first year, it was literally like a revolving door. We were seeing 50 people every day that were, that were finding our app and downloading it. And they'd get to it and they would, we would see about 50, 60% of them uninstalling. So we realized that this was a huge need, but we, we realized that we, weren't, we hadn't gotten to product market fit. So this, the, uh, 2019, we spent a lot uh, on um, customer discovery. We kind of went backwards. We spent a lot on customer discovery. Um, really looking into digging into analytics and specific uh, transactions within the app. How do we drive people to do specific uh, to do specific things? We did user testing, so we put an app in front of people and we had them, um, you know, uh, select different things in the app and see if they were actually getting to the features that we intended them to get to. And then we we tried to figure out what were what were the value items, the valuable items in the app. 
uh, for these people. And a lot of the, what we saw was people swapping exercises. A lot of what we saw was people logging meals. So really initially we were, we were thinking it was gonna be focused on workouts, but the vast, like we had a huge number of people that were really focused on uh, the meal side of things. So we realized that that was actually a big valuable asset to uh, our software. So we've been focusing a lot on figuring out well, making the, improving the meals as well as figuring out where in the workouts would be as valuable as the meals as people can use daily versus uh um you know with the with the meals where they use that daily but with the the workout side of things where they might use that you know once or twice throughout the week hello you guys still with me yeah, I, had, I don't think we have any more questions, so. Um, uh, quick, quick, oh, quick question, um, quick question, sir. Yep. Sorry, um, hey, it's Michael. Um, um, I, I assume the behavior is, is daily, if not weekly. How do, uh, what, what's daily active users look like and, and uh, what's your daily active to monthly active ratio? Yeah, so we focus, we've been focusing mostly on uh, monthly active, just because um, with the fitness uh, market in terms of app usage, uh, it's 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 really common that people are going to turn in and out. So they they'll most people while we want them to be super active, people that work out every single day like I do, most people don't necessarily work out every single day. So um, we see people that come in and out throughout like weeks. So our our monthly active right now is in, is about ten percent of our current uh, user base, in between like six and seven thousand people a month. Oh, I have a question then. Um, for your paid users, what does their monthly active numbers look like? Like just for the ones who are using the premium? Um, I would have to actually check on that number. I'm not 100% sure on the premium active. Um, but I can tell you that there are power users. So the premium users are, are people that use, they use it pretty much every day. We actually have something in the app called uh, a streak. Um, and we see about 60 to 70% of our premium users that have streaks um, in the app. Usually are maintaining, are maintaining streak, streaks. So I think if we up that number, we're going we're gonna to see a lift in the, the active in general. You said currently a 2.7% convert to pay. What do you do to get that number up to like 4 or 5%? So um, one of the things we've, that we've come across in the audit was that um, are offering right now we offer pretty much most of the app for free the only thing we offer that's paid is the meal plan as well as small things here and there in the, the workout program where our competitors most of our you know our big player competitors are the whole, whole app is paid they don't even have really um, a free version specifically like weight training apps you'll see that they have like a paywall so maybe you'll get like a trial for a week or two and then at that point you have to you have to go fully paid where we don't have that so um, we're working with, we don't want to do a full uh, paywall at this time because we, um, we think that like offering the free part is benefiting the community and we really want to build that community because we feel like it's under addressed. But we think that we can tweak some things so that we can give them just enough value, but um, hold back on some of the things that are going to take them to the next level. And, that, and then that way, I think we'll, we'll convert a lot higher. All right, Tremaine. You killed it, man. That was an awesome pitch. Um, Thanks, guys. I'm going to answer the questions as well. Um, thank you so much. Um, and we'll give the judges a few more moments here to tally up their scores uh, while we bring up our next uh, startup, which is going to be Girls University. And Ashley, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, we got some good stuff. Um, now you're muted. Let's see if we can unmute you. Ashley, can you unmute yourself? It looks like you have... Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, it's always tricky. With this, uh, with this. Okay. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. yes. All right. Sorry about that. I was joined via phone because I was having audio problems. Okay, okay. Well, we'll, 
you want to share your screen? Sure. Let's get this rocking and rolling. <laughs> Make sure all the judges have got their scores in. I think we should be good. Okay, let me get five minutes on the clock here. And whenever you're ready. Okay. All right. You guys can see my screen. Good. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for having me be a part of this competition. I'm super excited. I'm Ashley Smart. I am the founder and owner of Girls University. And my key question for today is what's your daughter or cousin or um, maybe your little sister, what is she doing after school? So I have this key question and I want you guys to uh, take a look at this for a second. So that's Girls University. Welcome to Girls University. As an overview of Girls University, it was founded in 2016 uh, by myself. And my passion and my career path has been STEM. Um, I am a technologist uh, and that is what I do. I, I've coded, and I've done all these things, but one of the things that is key um, in today's society is that there aren't very many uh, black females or minorities, whether that's um, all the different types of races um, and backgrounds, but then women in general focused in this uh, space. So if we look at the facts um, and as far as girls learning, 91% of girls or Americans, people feel that it's important for girls to be able to learn outside of school. And you're able to learn outside of school and get these 21st century learning um, uh, activities. So problem solving, critical thinking, world, real world problems, and help them develop uh, with the workforce. Now, you may, in thinking, school. you may be wondering what, um, why an after school program and why is it all focused on um, all girls? So what we believe is that it's important for girls to be in this space to better prepare them. Um, Self-belief plus effort equals confidence, right? So um, only 4% of uh, women are CEOs right now um, in all of the S&P 500 companies. So we wanna help with getting girls more confident and prepare them for their futures. Um, again, we are STEM focused, so science, technology, engineering, and then we do throw in the arts and, uh, with, and math as well. But in today's workforce, only 14% of women are um, engineers, 25% are technology, technology professionals, and then also those are 10% in the aerospace and engineering. Now, if we start breaking down the numbers, we're looking at only 5.3% are Asian um, as well. So what do we provide? What are we able to do? We have an after school program and that's a weekly um, tuition that parents pay. We also provide um, camps, 
workshops, tutoring, which is our highest margin um, activity for parents. We also are able to provide um, parties and other activities as well. Um, since, of, since we've been in COVID-19, we've had to shift our, um, uh, our plans and we've turned into more of an online virtual, but we do still run small programs uh, with the girls on site, which I'm in Girls University right now in our Florence location. Right now we've got 50 girls uh, that have been or participated in the last year in our program. We've got nine partners. We work a lot with schools um, as well. So um, we've worked with a lot of different um, collaborators along the way. And this is Girls University. Thank you, Ashley. That was great. Um, wonderful, wonderful presentation. And everyone in the comments was, uh, was loving it. Um, judges, uh, let's get into some questions uh, for Ashley. Hey, it's Shyla. Um, so great presentation and anything that deals with girls and, and, and young women, I'm definitely a fan of and so appreciate Girls University. Mm -hmm. um, the, the issue that I have, I mean, I understand you went virtual. As soon as you started talking, I mean, I got, you know, a great presentation, but I thought you were still face to face just based on the videos, and I mean, I know we're in a, in a, in an isolated moment. So right. mm -hmm. I want to, you know, from, from an investor standpoint, I want to know early on that you pivot, <laughs> right? And these kids are not meeting face to face now that you guys have solved this by going online. And what does that programming look like right now? How many girls are sort of engaged with pivot? You know, do you get, keep the same sort of audience or did some drop off because of the online piece? So that's the kind of story I want to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and in your story, you know, tighten it up a bit. Of course, you went over time and I know you had way more to, to go through. Mm -hmm. um, and so the beginning could just be a little bit shorter mm -hmm. and then mainly focusing on where you are now and how you sort of want to grow that in this virtual environment. Right. Um, because as a parent, you know, me seeing kids, you know, all going to gather together right now makes me, makes me a little afraid, but I want to see where you are now and where you are going to go um, after COVID, post COVID. Right. Yep, so we are still meeting on site. We meet in small groups. That's one of the best things that we can provide for parents is a small group atmosphere. We follow all of the COVID-19 guidelines. Um, everybody wears a mask. Um, there's only employees and girls in the space. We are cleaning all of the time. Um, and so girls have their own um, uh, supplies and everything um, here in the space. So we're not a YMCA, we're not a Boys and Girls Club where they've got hundreds of kids. We are a small um, niche-based um, program that's specific for um, um, specific girls. Sure, and so and since you guys have been meeting, you'll you get some images of those girls in masks. I think that's an even more powerful story to tell, yeah. right? That you, you know, even in this sort of pandemic, you found a way around it to be able to still engage these young girls in programs. Yeah. I think that's a powerful story. Hi, Thank you. Uh, Hi, Ashley. This is Ariel. Uh, one of the things as a... Um, hey, Ariel. Uh, sorry, the, the questions are just for the judges. Oh, sorry. Okay. You're good. You're good. No worries. Michael, I think you were going to ask a question. Yeah, I just had a quick question. on the, um, how, did, how did you develop the curriculum? So our curriculum is things that I've come across in my uh, career and things that I feel that are important and geared towards girls. But we also do consume content from other places as well. So whether we're looking on the internet, uh, we have a number of different websites that we gain con content from um, as well. But we do have some in-house things that we've developed that are uh, specific programs um, that I have developed myself. Ashley, uh, again, congrats on what you've built so far and, and congrats on pivoting during uh, the pandemic. Um, since you've been pushed to pivot during the pandemic, uh, curious to know what, um, that, what you've learned over the past couple of months that you could apply to the business moving forward to potentially scale, um, whether that's new areas um geographically to, to be in or reaching uh, more people virtually 
Um, how are you taking what you've learned uh, from this pandemic pivot and, and how would you apply that to, to scale the offering that you have so far? Um, because as an investor, I'm looking for an opportunity that, um, that has some scalability. Right, exactly. So um, we've done a lot in the online space. However, our parents and our market do not really enjoy the online space, to be honest. They still want that in person. A lot of parents are still working, so they're not at home. They're going back to the office. So that's where our program um, is pretty key because we do provide that need for those working parents. Now, as far as us expanding and um, becoming more, I would love to see Girls University in more rural um, um, locations and I'd love to enter a bigger market. So I'm in Florence, South Carolina. I'd love to enter into Charlotte. I'd love to see us going to Raleigh where I know there are more girls um, that would be and be able to take advantage of our um, offerings. And um, coupled with that, I would really like to engage the schools more. Um, we've had a number of different partnerships over the years with the schools um, locally, but I'd love to be able to expand that regionally and also nationally as well. So I'm looking for my brand and my organization to um, be able to engage as many girls um, across the United States and maybe the world one day. Great presentation. Um, my question for you is, if you were to you know, win the prize tonight, what would you use the money for? I would use the money to provide um, opportunities uh, for my parents right now who are not um, able, who are not working, and they've been supporting our program and attending our camps, and they're not able to right now. That would give me the opportunity to provide um, for their girls to come and participate in what we're doing. Um, and that also will help um, with bills because we have been closed since um, March and we opened back up uh, just a month ago or so. Um, I, you've talked a bit about your market. I was wondering if you could go a, a bit deeper into that. What is kind of the income bracket? What is the exact profile of, of the girls and the families you target? Because um, obviously, there's a lot of different types of after school programs. There's a lot of different types of parents. How do you think about who exactly you're targeting? So um, our target market is really um, working parents. Um, and so that's uh, going to be uh, maybe between the ages of maybe 24 um, and then even and up. And then if you look at the grandparents, because a lot of grandparents are also providing um, support for their grandchildren, uh, their granddaughters. So we do have a lot of grandparents who uh, participate in our program. Um, but as far outside of that, it's really working parents and those parents who um, want their daughters to have a little bit more um, in the after school environment. Um, it's very structured here. Um, and we're able to provide uh, girls with a space to become more, do more, um, and just explore uh, uh, anything that they would like to become. All right, I think that's all the questions. Ashley, you killed it. Great job, great presentation. Very cool company. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to see uh, you know, where you go with all of this, even you know, outside of, the, outside of the, this pitch competition. It's really an uh, amazing idea and what you're doing is important for sure. Um, we'll give it a few moments here uh, to let the judges tally up their scores. Um, and next up we have Block Software and uh, we have Riley Jones. Riley, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Hey, Riley. How's it going? Good. How are you? Already? <laughs> yep. Uh, Wonderful. Um, let, let's bring your uh, presentation up. Okay, great. And let me make sure we're good on the judges standpoint. Um, let's make sure everyone has these filled out. Okay. Looks good. Good, good. Okay, wonderful. Um, 
Okay, so she's doing it right now. Okay, great. Um, let me get five minutes on the clock and, and we'll kick things off. Also, for if you, if you guys joined late, um, you know, we're, we're in the, the fifth startup right now uh, block. We have one more after this roomie. And then we're going to go and uh, to the judges and the scores, and we're going to give out uh, $1,000 cash to the winner and then a bunch of other prizes. Uh, the finalists are all going to get also Entrepro memberships. This is going to get them free tickets to any of our events for the next year. It's also going to get them free access to all the deals and discounts with our partners like Brex, Dropbox, G Suite, a bunch of free stuff, a bunch of discounts on software and all sorts of stuff that we have to offer. Um, we have a uh, discount with Start Engine, discount with Idea Motive, uh, Realm, uh, Roger with Realm Startup Advisories giving a uh, free pitch deck reviews and consultation to everyone. And then we have Foursquare Law giving out uh, free consultations on, on legal advice as well. So um, I think we're all set. I just want to throw that out there real quick uh, if, if people joined late and um, I'm going to toss things over back to Riley. Uh, we're going to kick things off. I got five minutes on the clock and I'm ready whenever you are. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so good evening, everyone. My name is Riley Jones. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Block Software, where we build career services software to address the present and the future of work. We're a B2B SaaS software platform to help upskilling organizations close the skills information gap and the unemployment gap. But if we're discussing the future of work, it's important for us to not only talk about the trends that are gonna challenge us 50 years from now, but to pay attention really to the people today who are homeless, who are hungry, and the 44 million people who lost their jobs this past quarter due to COVID-19, and the up to 375 million people who are geared to be displaced due to the effects of automation. So if there were ever a future of work uh, for the business that we're building, that future is now. And our, our kind of clear value proposition is offering a platform that allows our customers to properly track skill development, use machine learning technologies to help employers highlight the skills that they want to recruit and track the acquisition of these skills. It provides a structured environment for programs to serve their participants more efficiently. Um, and this is particularly important uh, for young people of color, especially in today's social environment, um, because they otherwise would not have access to quality career training. So our approach is pretty straightforward. Uh, we digitize the existing processes that our customers already use, things like resume review and, and interview preparation. We centralize their data collection so that they can monetize their programming in ways that make them more sustainable. Our first customer, the Knowledge House, made $70,000 alone through our monetization um, approach. And so when Bronx Community College and the Knowledge House came to us, they were challenged by inconsistent measurement of the skills before and after the courses that they offered. They also experienced a decrease in funding because of a decline in the graduate uh, in graduate job. The real cost to the mismanaged relationships in these programs. There's up to seventeen thousand dollars for a job seeker, thirty thousand dollars for an employer partner, and over one million dollars per funder. And so we've done a bottom-up market analysis based on our average contract size of fifteen thousand dollars, and our market is about is worth about fifty-nine billion dollars. Our theory of change is clear. By closing the skills information gap with this strategy, we're able to dr uh, drastically increase the quality of skills matching between students and employers and increase job placements. And the end goal is to have a data-driven marketplace for direct candidate to employer placements. Reach Capital, which is a prominent ed tech funder, recently put out this graphic describing the investment opportunity in the workforce development and education space. We fit neatly in that kind of upper right uh, the upper right square um, re regarding personalized pathway support um, to support middle skills pathway navigation. This supports the venture back ability of our concept because ed tech and workforce funders are paying attention to the type of work that we're doing. Um, there are comp uh, competitors at various aspects of our business. Our competitive advantage is that all of our data collection uh, tools are structured and designed with workforce experts in mind and in partnership with them. Our business model allows programs to earn revenue uh, via the co-designed data tools, like I mentioned, and they can receive commissions based on referral sales. Um, and in the development of our tools, there's a no, cool, no code data tool builder that expedites the development of the tools. And our tech team is completely in-house, which reduces our engineering spend. And as far as defensibility and risk mitigation, um, my co-founder Amina has what we like to call the IKEA effect. Um, because of our business model captures account management 
and engineering time on the front end, we're able to com customize product delivery in a way that keeps customers bought in and keeps retention high and decreases churn. And so in the near term, we have a pipeline of uh, five customers. Um, this was really going to mark our first um, expansion outside of New York City. We've got the T. Howard Foundation, which we just signed um, last week, which is based in Maryland. Uh, we're talking to Midsoft Works, which is based in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and we're looking at other places outside of New York, um, and particularly in New Jersey, um, the next three months. And we've pitched to the US, US Conference of Mayors um, in partnership with the Obama Foundation to take this uh, not just to um, the cities that I just mentioned, but really to take this and, and scale it nationally. Our team is really dynamic. We have uh, Olivia and Camille who are on our engineering team. They have uh, experiences at uh, companies like Facebook and Google. Um, Gary, who's the Deputy uh, Chief Technology Officer for the City of New York. Che and Chris, who are our account managers. And me and Amina, who come from background at Columbia University and Princeton University. We made Forbes 30 under 30 recently. Um, and you know, we actually just signed two advisors, one uh, Director of Engineering, uh, for Trilogy Education, Jason Phillips, and the Commissioner for Small Business Services, the major workforce funder in the city of New York, Greg Bishop. So uh, again, we hope that you will join us as we scale career training services to meet the needs for the future of work. Thank you. Perfect timing, Riley. Great job. That was, uh, you were right on the money with that great presentation. Um, we'll kick it off to uh, judges for, for some Q&A now. Yeah, definitely leave your slides up if, if there's questions about uh, slides and stuff too. Um, whoever wants to start. Hey, so it's Shyla. Um, I love the space you're in. I love the partners. And you mentioned Greg Bishop, who is, is a sort of great ally for entrepreneurship. So kudos to you for getting him as, a, as an advisor. Um, I didn't see sort of an exit strategy. You, you showed some pretty big names up here in terms of who are already in the space. Mm -hmm. Could be a, you could who could possibly be an acquirer of yours. Have you thought about your ex exit strategy at all? Yes, yeah, so we actually have. So uh, Trilogy Education, which was actually just purchased by Two U, um, that's that's actually part of why we brought on Jason as an advisor. Um, because he can help us from a tech perspective understand what kinds of things um, and what kinds of gaps you know he's seeing in the space based on his work at uh, Trilogy and Two U. Oh, good. Very smart thinking. Smart thinking. Bring the, the competition on. <laughs> That's all I had. Great job, though. Thank you. Uh, sorry, what, what, what's the uh, current business model? So it's a B2B SaaS. So we, uh, we have a tiered SaaS model. So our lowest price point is $15,000 and it goes uh, up to $100,000. So uh, our first customer we signed at, at, at $30,000 price point. Um, what that covers is um, a customized tool that we'll build for them, as well as uh, some account management um, and the resume tool and the uh, cover letter tool that we've already built. And, and what are the tiers based on? Uh, the tiers are based on account management and engineering. So the idea is that um, if we're customizing a tool, that at some point, uh, at some point at scale, we'll actually have tools built that will serve uh, customers down the line. That we won't continually have to do customization. That we've already kind of built the tools on our product roadmap. I know you're uh, early on, Riley. Uh, one, congrats on what you built so far. I think. Um, the need for, uh, for folks to be lifelong learners um, is, is certainly evident and um, anything we can do from an infrastructure standpoint to make that easier for folks, um, the you know, nation and world will be better for it. Um, sales cycle wise, mm -hmm. um, I, know it's a, I know it's a SaaS business, but curious to know um, what the sales cycle has, has been like so far and what your expectations are moving forward uh, in terms of being able to hook these somewhat you know larger fish um, going, going forward yeah absolutely so um, you know I would say actually that in some sense we've been well we were well positioned for the COVID-19 um, pandemic kind of effects of that um, because I would say before this people didn't really understand why people needed um, job and career and workforce development support. And so in some sense, our inbound sales have increased a ton. So um, the T. Howard Foundation came to us, uh, Mid-South Works based in Memphis came to us, 
Um, New Brunswick Tomorrow, which is an organization based in uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey, has come to us. So it actually seems that because all the programs have had to digitize, that there's a kind of inbound need for these kinds of things. And our goal is, as you can see at the bottom, to close um, 50 customers at 30K um, over the next year. Um, going, And that was something we had already planned to for this September. Um, and that, you know, that would take us about $1.5 million in revenue. All right, Riley, you killed it, man. That was, that was an amazing presentation. Um, thank you so much for being a part of this and, and great pitch. Um, we'll give it a couple of minutes here as the judges tally up and then we're gonna pass things off to our, our final uh, startup. So thank you everyone for sticking through this um, and, and continuing to uh, stick around for these pitches. I've been blown away by the presentations and, and these companies that they've put together uh, are, are phenomenal. Uh, so, you know, kudos to, to all the startups who have pitched so far and we have, we have a great one left. Um, Dapo, are you, are you here? It looks yes, like you I am. Can you hear me? Hey, how are you? How are you? How are you? Good. Um, yeah. Are you all set? You want to share your screen and then uh, we'll kick things off here in a minute once the uh, judges are, are finished with their um, tallying their scores. Sure. One second. Okay. okay. Um. Can you see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Yep, I see it. Okay. Um, um, okay, I think the judges are pretty much good. Um, let me get five minutes on the clock and whenever you're ready, go ahead. Sure. sure. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Dapo, founder at Rumi. We help you lease out your furniture to people that don't want to own it. Okay, one second. <laughs> it's the 15th of the month. Your apartment lease is up and you found a new place. Look at your furniture and realize every piece can't go. You head over to Facebook Marketplace and post your item. Next, you hit let go, offer up on Craigslist and repost them there. Before you know it, it's the end of the month. You spent the past two weeks negotiating numerous let go sales, contemplated putting it up in storage, or worse, doing a roadside sofa drop off. Just ask your friends. Nothing is sold and you're getting desperate. And all you want is the freedom to pick up and move on a whim without a sofa tethering you to a single location. And on the flip side, if you've just moved into town and need furniture, you're either searching for furniture in places you're not acquainted with, dealing with an Ikea assembly, or building furniture in between unpacking. Who has the time for that? I don't. The culprit? Moving. Moving sucks. Moving is exciting and anxiety at the same time. No one should be a fan of moving unless you're moving on to bigger and better things. If you're a young urban dweller, there's a good chance that you live a transient lifestyle. You're either moving fairly frequently for work, school, or relationship. So why the anxiety? It's the whole notion of having to pack everything and having to move furniture in. So what's the solution? Meet Rumi an online marketplace that lets you lease out your furniture to, pe to people that don't, that don't want to own it. Our, pl our platform lets you earn a return on investment on your gently used furniture while helping people furnish their space short term from a wide selection at an affordable monthly price, basically allowing you to live like a baller and not spend like one. And within this group, we target urban dwellers who live a transient lifestyle move fairly frequently for work, school, or, or relationship that own high-end modern furniture or need, or need great furniture within, or, or need great furniture without the commitment of ownership. As well, we target furniture owners that have brands like these with posts that are older than a week at a starting point of $300. And the way we get to these people in the first place, our go-to-market strategy is built around partnership hubs and technology that gets us access to many of our end users, such as partnering with local universities and apartment rental sites, Airbnb Superhost, and automatic group hosting on multiple online marketplaces. So how big is the opportunity? Over 800 million people use marketplaces globally each month. 
with over 109 million people each month in the U.S. And when ranchers become the majority population in the, U in the U.S. in U.S. cities, the major U.S. U.S. cities, rooming will, be, rooming will be taking a cut out of this opportunity. That being said, this is how we make money. We charge a flat 30% commission on each transaction. With a hyper focus on Chicago, in Chicago, and adjusting for the current economic conditions due to the outbreak, we project a $50,000 revenue in our first year. Since our MVP launched March of this year, we have over 30 listings and five paying customers, generating $1,000 in revenue to date. And these are, the, these are direct and indirect competitors in our space. So what's our competitive advantage? We don't own any furniture, hence we have zero inventory. As well, because the furniture is coming from a broad number of owners, leasees have a broad selection to pick from. And finally, furniture, furniture lease, leasers can post once across multiple platforms. So why am I building this? I'm a technical founder with a career in the commercial furniture industry. I'm also the co-founder at City Spoon, a restaurant dining app. Rumi has gone through the well, Y Combinator startup school and is currently going through 1871's Paris program in Chicago. If we win, I plan to hire a lawyer to, draw, to draft up our terms of service. So this month, if you're moving and you don't want to negotiate let go sales, you don't want to put your furniture in storage, you don't want to do a roadside sofa drop off, you don't want to search your furniture in places you're not acquainted with, deal with an IKEA assembly, or build furniture in between unpacking, list your furniture on Rumi and earn a return on your investment. And when you need furniture, lease it on Rumi so you can live like a baller and not spend like one. Thank you. Awesome pitch, Dapo, that was great. Live like a baller, I love, <laughs> that's a great tagline <laughs> at the end there. Great job, great job. Um, everyone in the comments is, is loving it too. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, I'll open it up to the, for the judges um, for, for questions. Uh, Dap, I'd keep your presentation up just in case oh, people have questions on the sure. slides real sure. as we go through Q and A. So, hey, it's Shiloh again. I, so um, I'm wondering in, with COVID-19 and this whole touchless society we're starting to go in, how are you gonna be um, a valuable company in this you know, we're talking about rented furniture that sounds like it's going to go from home to home to home. Um, you know, safety issues are, I mean, I'm thinking about safety. I'm thinking about a whole lot of things right now um, in terms of this, um, in terms of your product. And, and then the other thing is there are retailers, even though they, you know, they, the, the, the cost to rent furniture is, is, is crazy. But, you know, you have a, a large com competitor out there with these rent, uh, rent, rental furniture companies. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you sort of market yourself against someone like that who's talking about newer furniture? You know, I don't know what process they go through, but, you know, I really want, I'm just really curious about, you know, how are you solving around what's happening now? Absolutely. Great question. So as you, as you heard on the pitch, we launched March of this year. And right after that was a lockdown. And what we noticed was that we're innovative. We noticed that one of the things that we could do right away is introduce contactless pickup and drop off. And we're working with, what we've done is we've partnered with a, with a local company in town in Chicago here that does that to make sure that we're not interacting with the um, owners of the furniture or the people that want the furniture. So we, what we've introduced, and we actually introduced this um, in May, was contactless pickup and delivery to make sure that the owners of the furniture um, you know, are, feel safe that they're not gonna be exposed to anything, nor the people that want the furniture be exposed to anything. In between that pickup, we have the opportunity to actually address the furniture, if, especially if it's kind of leather um, in, 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 in nature. We could, you know, wipe it down, sanitize it, and stuff like that. But we are looking to actually place that um, 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 responsibility on the owner um, to make sure that those are stuff that they actually sign off on when they when they give us the furniture. Um, your second question in terms of the competitors out there, uh, in terms of our competitors in our space. Um, they own brand new furniture. So they have a, they have a very limited subset of, of, of furniture at a very high price point that they're offering to our community. Um, but if you're looking at, right now you're looking at the competitor slide deck and you see, uh, you see uh, Feather, you see Furnish and, 
uh, Ca Casa One, um, their, 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 their inventory is very limited. Um, but if you start looking at the errands of this world and um, the um, renaissance of this world, they're not targeting our demographics, which are urban um, 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 people that live in the city that are that um, kind of like what Rumi is trying to do is be a balance between Rent the Runway and Airbnb. We want to give you an experience of that awesome furniture, but not having to own it. And some of these other competitors out there, at least the legacy um, competitors out there, they're not even targeting. Our demographics don't even walk into their stores. Got it. Got it. So, so, so you guys are going to depend on these the the furniture owner to clean it, um, and 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 in, that, in essence, sort of taking the risk, assuming that they clean it and then you know renting it to someone else or leasing it to someone else. Cor correct, and that's why it's it's a very valid question. One of the things that we that I mentioned in, in the pitch was that if we do win, um, we have to we have to have a solid um terms of use <laughs> for roomy because there are a lot of things that we still need to cover in terms of um, the balance between um safety ownership and even the 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 life of that uh, of that furniture it's mm -hmm. something we could do um with our partners in the ship in the shipping and delivery side of things we mm -hmm. could take on that responsibility of making sure that the furniture is inspected before pickup and, and clean because that's the opportunity for us to take a look at it before it, before it leaves that person's play um, the owner's place to the to the to the or to the person that wants to rent it or lease it. Okay, all right, that's all I had. Thanks. So great presentation. Thank you. So, How's it going? oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I'll go ahead, there. Okay. Hi cool. there. Hey, how are you doing? Um, so when you talk about making Very this good. An ex good, when you talk about making this an experience, you know, I start thinking about um furniture sets different types of styles of furniture and then also um, high price furniture as opposed to kind of lower quality pieces is that the direction that you're taking this company to where this is about you know statement pieces and um other sorts of uh um certain sorts of styles that people might want to change in and change out or is this a platform where you know i can take this this computer chair here which you know isn't an expensive computer chair here but is fine and put it on the platform to sell. Are you going to have limits in that way? Yes. So our target is actually high-end modern furniture that you can switch out like a, a Barcelona chair or an Aaron chair. I'm, I, you know, I, because I come from the commercial furniture industry, I'm always around all these nice looking pieces. And when I come back home and I'm like, how can I get those pieces in my house? You know, so I'm looking at high-end furniture, a Barcelona chair, an Aaron chair, um, some of these other levels and brands that are uh, synonymous to like high end and being able to make it affordable for anyone that wants to switch out their space um, for three months, six months or a year. And what do you think about the supply and demand issue? Because I would, I, I mean, I could see it going either, either way that way. I mean, if it's super high priced items, then there might not be the, the supply. But then again, you know, um, yeah, just just answer how you how you see that issue, I guess. In terms of supply and demand um, for Rumi, um, the good thing about Rumi is that once the user sets the pr the price that they want to lease it at, and they set the terms at which they want to lease it over, it makes it affordable. If that's what you're, if the, in terms of in terms of um, supplying, uh, have a supply on our on our on our on our website for people to actually pick from and say, hey. I do want that Aaron chair. An Aaron chair runs for like fourteen hundred dollars, but spread over a year, it's going to cost me a lot less than that. In terms of um, demand, uh, what we're doing is we're also targeting. You know, like I said on our on our go-to-market strategy, we're targeting. Uh, where is it? Um, yeah, we're targeting uh, targeting people that live in apartment rental uh, apartment rentals um, because a lot of these people that live downtown Chicago. If you go on Facebook Marketplace right now and you look at uh, a CB a CB two uh, CB two unit at a three hundred dollar level or higher, they're sitting there for like over a week. So we started targeting those kind of inventory that's sitting out there because people don't want to pay you know the higher amount for it. We started targeting those people on Facebook Marketplace to convert them over to to Rumi so they could lease it out and get people more interested in their pro in their in their furniture. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.
Dapo, um, congrats on what you built, my man. Um, are you interested in uh, providing uh, commercial opportunities, so for events, et cetera, um, to, uh, to, to your users, or are you strictly gonna be focused on um, consumer to consumer um, uh, re rentals? That is a great question. Um, Brendan, how are you? Nice seeing you and talking to you again. Um, it's something we should definitely take a look at. Um, there are a lot of opportunities in Chicago here for companies that want to stage, um, you know, for movie sets and stuff like that. That's an opportunity. Yeah, we need, we need couches for Shark Tank. Yes, absolutely. Every time I look at Shark Tank, I, I keep eyeing those chairs that the, the, uh, the, the sharks are sitting on. I'm like, those are some nice looking chairs. So, so um, yes, that is definitely an opportunity for us to go after. Since we're MVP, we wanted to at least test out the residential yep. opportunities first and see how we could continue to improve the process, improve the experience for end users. And obviously, there's these other um, verticals that we could jump into as well. Yeah, and, and I'm not trying to push you in any, you know, one direction or the other. I know you're early on, and, and there's honestly some value to um, – to being focused on on one market or one opportunity, if if, if that's what you want to do, but um, definitely worth think, you know worth considering. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Brandon. So I had a question. So walk me through this, right? I yes. rent out a couch or something. Somebody gets it, at least to them for a period of time. What happens if that person doesn't pay or decides they no longer want that piece of furniture? Then what happens? That is a good question. So once you sign up for the couch, um, you lease the couch. It's a monthly payment that you're making, a recurring payment that you're making that we, that is being charged in your credit card. Um, if you do miss a payment, uh, we do reach out to you. That happens a lot uh, with any other company um, that you lease something for. Things happen. So we reach out to you and ask you what's going on and try to work things out. If it's becoming a, a problem, then we have to actually come and pick up the furniture furniture and if you no longer want the furniture you also have, you, you also have to just let us know that you don't want the furniture and that's when we come in and just pick it up then what we do is we, we list it on we contact the owner asking what they want us to do do you want do you want us to relist it yes we go ahead and relist it and we just start looking for another renter but in between um the first owner the first rent rent renter and the, the, the new potential renter that gives us an opportunity, obviously, to take a look at the furniture, make any um, cleaning or uh, corrections that we need to make to it, and then get it ready for um, the next owner. So then do you have to store that piece of furniture? That is a very good question. So we do not have, at this point, we do not have a storage spot. We don't have a storage um, space yet. We do suspect that we would have to have a hold in place where we get to do this and take a look at it, um, at the furniture when this opportunity i don't want to call it a problem when this opportunity presents itself we have to have obviously address that okay and then my next question is i understand you're talking a lot about chicago that's where you started but how do you think about your growth plan like like what happens when you have to move and and set up rooming in another city let's say you got to go from chicago to miami right like plenty of apartments a lot of dope you know furniture that's the next thing you go to. How do you make that happen? Do you have to actually physically go there, have boots on the ground? Do you have a campaign? What, what, what does that process look like? Absolutely. So we would have to replicate. The good thing about Rumi is that we use a lot of technology to actually source um, the furniture that we want to repost on Rumi. So that part of it doesn't require us to physically be there. However, in terms of engaging with um, apartment rental uh, sites um, in Miami, um, local Airbnb super host, local universities in, in, in Miami, we definitely would have to have, you know, uh, a replica, a replica of myself out there, or hopefully, you know, within, before the end of the year, I could have like a co-founder join me as well. And we'd have to like, you know, kind of like take the same system we have here and move it out to, to Miami. Thank you. Uh, just a, oh. uh, hi. Hi, it's Michael. Hi, Dabo. Uh, quick, just a quick comment. Um, I, I, I know a couple of those logos you mentioned, and something I've struggled with is just unit economics on, on furniture. Um, just they're, you know, they're huge slug around, and just from my time at Uber, I know there's a lot of uh, unforeseen costs. 
uh, with tech enabled logistics. Um, the pricing you, you mentioned, is it who, who sets the pricing, the owner of the furniture? Correct. Got it. Okay. Um, no, no, no question. Just um, always, always have questions around how contribution margins look uh, as you scale and how do you sort of productize away all the friction that comes with moving things around, uh, especially uh, if you're reliant on um, the person leasing the furniture and, and their whims in terms of how often they want to uh, exchange the furniture. So just, just, a, just a thought. Thank you. Thank you for, for that. All right. I think that about wraps it up. Dapo, great presentation, great pitch. Um, thank you so much for being a part of this. And uh, without, let me uh, remove your screen sharing here. And without further ado, we're going to tally up all the scores. Um, so if the judges can please uh, go back through um, your score sheets, um, make any adjustments you want, not, you want now that you've seen all the pitches. And uh, we'll give it a few mi moments here and uh, we'll announce the, the winners of the thousand dollars cash plus all the other prizes and everything else that we're going to be giving out uh, from our, you know, from our sponsors and partners that, uh, that are part of this event. Um, we are going to do a, a quick giveaway here ourselves uh, for Entra. Not only are all the finalists getting uh, a free Entra Pro membership, but if you, um, if you text us, I'm going to drop in our, our number here. Uh, you'll get on our, our in our texting community. This is going to get you access to all of these exclusive giveaways and stuff that we do. Um, and anyone who texts us uh, from this event, just you can just say hi or hey, or whatever. Just text the number I just put in the chat. You'll get a free ticket to any upcoming event that you want from us. So text us the number. I, I can reply here right on my phone. Um, and then just let us know what event you want to come to and, and we'll shoot you a, um, a ticket to any event. Um, and, and Brandon, yes, we're from Pittsburgh. I'm in Pittsburgh right now. Um, I'm in our office. Um, I can give you a little, little view here of, uh, of downtown. Um, so we're up, we're up here in the steel building on the 49th floor. Uh, thankfully, our office has been open the whole time. Everyone has to wear masks and stuff, but there's no one here. So it, it's been great. I've been able to get out of my house at least <laughs> a little bit. So um, awesome. We got some Steelers fans here. Yes, I'm a Steelers fan for sure. Um, and, and thank you everyone for sticking around. After we announce the winners, we are also going to be doing some networking. We're going to do some breakout sessions. So you actually be able to network and meet some of the other attendees that you've been chatting with this whole time. And I'm also going to launch a poll here. So if you look on the bottom and click the poll, we're going to see what the audience picks as the best uh, pitch. So please fill out uh, the poll. Let's see what, what everyone thinks was, was their favorite pitch. Uh, wh which pitch did you like the best? And then we'll, we'll get a cool comparison here with the other, uh, with the other judges. Oh yeah, Mac, you're from Baltimore. That, that's uh, we'll, we'll have to have uh, some some fun during the uh, Steelers Ravens game sometime. <laughs> Bit of rivalry going on here. Um, yeah, so please please do the poll. We have we still have almost 250 people here, so it's been great great attendance. Thank you all for being a part of this. Um, let me get these scores tallied up. We're gonna bring. Um, uh, the, the sponsors back on here real quick, just to share w one last thought for people who came on late and weren't around. I'd love for the, the sponsors and, and we'll bring up um, Anaki are you from uh, Start Engine. Are you still here? And uh, we'd love to have you share again about Start Engine if people came on late and, and what uh, prizes you're giving away. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm here once again. Uh, congrats to everybody who competed. Really awesome. That was a, a great way to spend the evening. Again, uh, my name is Iñaki. I'm the head of partnerships at StartEngine, which is an equity crowdfunding platform. Uh, our mission is to democratize access to capital. So we believe that every entrepreneur, every founder out there should have an equal chance at raising capital. And that's what we do. Uh, we have about 80 companies right now raising uh, money from a million dollars to 
$24 million, which we just broke the record for this week. So once again, thanks for having us, Michael, and the whole Entree um, family. Congrats to the contestants. Uh, yeah, so our prizes would be uh, for qualifying companies. So first place is going to be $1,000 off. Second place, $750 off. And third place, $500 off, off the start engine campaign management fee. So excited for the follow-up. Uh, we'll communicate with all you guys. And uh, yeah, check us out. Uh, contact me if you have any ideas for partnerships or if you want to raise money. We're here for you guys. Uh, thanks again. Appreciate you, you being here. And um, yeah, definitely check out Start Engine if you guys are in the process of raising money or looking to raise money. Reach out. Um, I don't know if you, Anak, if you want to put any links in, in there, your email or whatever, for people to reach out or contact you. I know we're going to be sending uh, links in the follow up email, the thank you email tomorrow for everyone to, to check out Start Engine. Um, but really appreciate you being a part of this. And, uh, you know, obviously with your, your commitment to helping entrepreneurs raise capital, it's, it's, you know, it's right at the core of what we're doing too. So uh, looking forward to, to future events with you as well. Thanks for being a part. It's a great time to raise guys. Uh, our, our community is, is active and super supported during this time. So, um, you know, stick with it, keep coming up with good ideas and uh, the, the capital is out there. So thanks again. Yeah. It seems like every uh, equity crowdfunding platform is like just everyone's raising more money than ever. So it's definitely an interesting opportunity for a lot of companies. Um, and um, so, yeah, th thanks again for being a part of this. Glad to have you here. Um, uh, Roger, are you still, still around? I'd, I'd love for you to share um, a little bit more about who you are if people came in late um, in, in Realm Startup Advisory too. Yep, I'm still here. It was great. Uh, enjoyed hearing the pitches, seeing the people presenting. You know, I definitely had some some feedback in, in the chat, but uh, one thing I will add to you know, that consultation is giving you feedback on your pitches, founders, uh, you know, the do's and don'ts, and, and that actually a lot of it was included in that video that we did, Michael, um, as you remember. But uh, yeah, what I will do for those that joined late, you know, what I'm gonna do for all of the finalists is give that startup template, uh, which I'm happy to also open that up to any founders out there that weren't even finalists, uh, as long as you, contact me through my website you see i put it up there realmstartup.com and i left that on the screen intentionally um so i will also be doing a free consultation probably be an hour uh with all the finalists and uh you know, giving you that feedback and and tips and you know see where things go and what i do for those that join late is that outsourced cfo kind of role that outsourced finance function the things that you don't want to deal with as a founder things that you should be dealing with is you know, growing your business, reaching out to potential investors, uh, customers, whatever the case may be, not in an Excel spreadsheet. So uh, that's the, the quick uh, spiel. And um, yeah, look, look me up. I uh, would happy to uh, be happy to talk to anyone. Amazing. Thank you so much, Roger, for being a part of this. And I, I did drop the link in uh, from the YouTube uh, workshop. Oh, that beautiful. We, yeah, that was great. That And then, yeah, if there's anything else that you want to drop in there, Definitely uh, connect with Roger. He, he's a fantastic person in the startup space to know, and he's helped a lot of people raise money and you know, with a lot of things as, as far as financial stuff goes with startups. So, yeah. Roger, appreciate you being a part of this event. Thanks. And, um, yeah, take care. I'm sure we'll be talking and seeing each other uh, again soon at another event soon. Um, and uh, finally, before, uh, well, before I bring up Pete from Fourscore, I, I also want to mention um, really quickly too with uh, our, our partner who wasn't able to make it, um, which is Idea Motive. Um, they're going to be giving out um, software um, credits to uh, the finalists. And if you reach out to them, you'll, you'll get a special deal as well uh, on building. If you're building an app or software, you'll be getting the discount being part of Entra uh, with them. So their, their team's in Poland, it's outsourced development. It's gonna be a fraction of the cost of developing stuff here in Pittsburgh. Uh, we've worked with them before. They've, they've been a huge part of our network. So I just dropped the link in there for that. Book a call with their team. Um, if you are, are building a, you know, a tech startup or building some type of technology or app or anything that you need help getting, getting going. Um, and let me bring back up Pete. Pete, are you, are you still here? And um, I'd so love to have you. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, 
So let's, um, I want first, let, let's share, I'd love to have you share again about four score law and everything for people who joined late. And I'll have you uh, kick things off and announce the, the third place prize. I'm gonna send you the, the company here privately in the chat, okay? All right, I'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, Pete Singh here with four score business law. Uh, we're based in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, but have a, a pretty wide presence uh, throughout the country, including some West Coast folk. Um, so our core premise is that ideas deserve opportunity. Um, we try to be a resource for founders uh, early stage and through every stage of growth. Um, so you can always feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we put together you guys will get this via email afterwards, a, a black focused business resources list. Uh, tons of links there with a PDF. Um, some stuff to inspire, some stuff to educate, uh, launch stage and growth stage. Um, so we want to share that with you. Um, the third place prize, which I will announce uh, shortly. I just sent it to you. And I also want to mention to the, the event we have uh, with, with you guys tomorrow. I just dropped the link in there. It's free to sign up. Um, it's going to be a really cool uh, workshop. It's going to be on Zoom again. We're going to go through one, one of your clients who was also a great startup, Poppy, uh, her story and then legal advice along the way that they ran into and, and different tips and tricks as far as what you should do, uh, different scenarios with legal, bringing on investors, all sorts of things uh, that start to go through. So I'm looking forward to that. Before you announce the third place prize, let me end this poll real quick and, and we can show the uh, results of the, uh, of the audience. So uh, the audience had Undock as, it was a really tight race. I mean, it was really tight. So they had Undock as their favorite. Um, and then a, a very close between Girls University and, and Block Software for second and third. Then we had RunMits, Bulk, and then Rumi. Uh, again, very tight. Like this is this is the tightest I think we've, we've had it. Um, and, and the judges' scores were really close as well. Uh, so I, I sent uh, Pete the third place, and uh, he's gonna he'll, he'll announce that now. All right. Uh, no snare drum here. But the third place winner is also the crowd favorite, Unduck. All right. Congratulations to Nash and Undock. You guys win from Start Engine credits. You win uh, Idea Motive credits. You get the, the legal consultation with Four Score Law. And uh, you get a free membership to Entre Pro as well. So you get all the events uh, and, and deals and discounts for um, everything that we have for free. Um, congratulations, Nash. You guys, you guys did a great job. Um, and we'll get into second place. Um, so second place, uh, and winner of the, uh, more start engine credits and a little bit more for idea motive credits is going to be bulk. Uh, and Tremaine, great presentation. Congratulations to Bulk and Tremaine for, for winning second place. And uh, w without further ado, the winner of the $1,000 cash and $1,000 for Start Engine credits, $1,000 for Idea Motive credits to build out your software or anything else. Uh, free EntrePro membership and free session with Roger from uh, Realm Startup Advisory. We have Block Software. Congratulations to Roger um, and, and everyone uh, that, that participated. This was, this was incredible. Uh, Block, uh, I, I don't know if you want to come on here real quick and, and just say a quick uh, if you want for winning. Um, Good. Thank you all. That was this is great. I'm glad you all had the event. I'm glad we were able to participate. Thank you all so much. Yeah, great job, man. You got, you did a fantastic job, and, and to all the other finalists, you, you guys did killer presentations, like some of the best that we've seen. Um, and and definitely, you know, if if you weren't part of the top three, like uh, I'm sure there's going to be people following up with you. Every, everyone loved the presentations from the chat. 
Um, and I'm sure you're going to get some customers. And I know there's other investors watching this as well. So thank you all for being a part of this. Uh, I'm going to let the judges come back on too. Um, we can kind of do the same order that we started with Brandon, if you want to come back on, uh, share any final thoughts. And then if there's anything that you, any ask or, or anything that you have right now where people can follow you or get in touch with you, um, you know, that'd be a great way to, to wrap things up here. Sure. Hey, thank you. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks again, Michael. And, uh, to the Entra team for hosting the event and for focusing on, on black founders. I, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs all around the country every year. Most of them um, founders of color, a lot of black entrepreneurs. So I know that that um, spark is there, that grit's there. They just need the resources and, and hopefully the movement that we've seen over the past couple of months will continue uh, because I think it'll pay dividends, not just for those that invest time and, and resources, but also um, for our society because they're building products and, and services um, that represent where we're going versus where we've been in the past. Um, if you want to get hooked up with Shark Tank, um, sharktankdiversitytour.com backslash pitch. I'll, I'll drop that in the chat again. And you can always uh, reach out to me on social. I'm Yes Brandon on IG and uh, also my, my business numbers and all of my social profiles. So feel free to text me to talk business anytime. Thanks. Appreciate you, Brandon. And, and yeah, you hit the nail on the head there, man. Um, you know, we don't want this to just be the first time or the, the last time that we do something like this uh, pitch competitions. I think we're going to, we, we've done a few before. Um, Brandon, you were part of the first one in, in New York at Microsoft, but uh, we definitely want to keep doing them. And especially for minority founders and whatnot, um, you know, we, we wanted this to be something where we could actually make an impact, give some cash, give people an, uh, you know, a voice and whatnot. So appreciate you being a part of this. And if, if you're interested in, in getting on Shark Tank, this is the guy, uh, this is the guy to reach out to. So um, definitely connect with Brandon. He has a huge network. And, and thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, if, if you want, it looks like some people are, are asking again, if you want to drop in your, your, uh, I know you do a lot through your, your texting, um, or social, um, you can drop it in there. And then I, I'd love to have Sydney come back up again and, and share where people can follow her or her final thoughts on, on tonight as well. Sydney, you still there? Um, she might've dropped off. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think she's here anymore. Um, Dell, are you, are you with us still? I'm with yeah. you. No. I'm okay. with you. <laughs> awesome. I think, I think Cindy had a run, but, uh, Dell, appreciate you being here. And for people who joined late, I'd love to, you know, uh, final thoughts and, you know, where people can find you and follow you. Yeah, no, I, I thought this was a great event. Um, all of the founders did an amazing job, even the ones who said that they, never pitched before or hadn't pitched often. Um, really, really strong event and strong group of founders. So thank you, Michael, and, and thanks to Entra for um, putting this together, um, for having uh, something that um, gives money to founders instead of just uh, it, advice for actually cutting the check. Um, we really do appreciate that and there needs to be more of that in this ecosystem. Um, so once again, you know, my name is Dell and my goal is to take every single company, so all of you, all of you who are deserving of investment and find the right avenue to get you that investment. So whether that be venture capital, whether that be revenue-based financing, whether that be banking or traditional financial instruments from $5,000 all the way up to $25 million, if you need some sort of capital to keep your company going, then come see me and have a conversation. Um, I'll hopefully be able to put you on the right track. Uh, I usually do. So uh, to find me, you can just go to Twitter. It's at Dell Johnson VC. Uh, you can also email me. It's Dell Johnson VC at gmail.com, or you can use my backstage capital email. That's Dell at backstage capital.com. Um, and Google me if, if you forget any of that, I'll put it in the, in the chat as well. So thank you to, to uh, everyone for joining. Thanks again to Entre and thanks to the judges and the founders. Thank you, Dell. I appreciate it. I, the light just went off here at my office. <laughs> it looks like that, that's uh, closing time. But uh, I really appreciate you being here and your you know, effort and initiative to really help you know, with the funding aspect of this, especially with minority founders and women founders. It's, it's incredible. And, and we really 
you know, we re we're really glad that you were able to be part of this event. Um, and, and thank you for, for, for joining and sharing your insights and everything. Um, let, let's kick it over to Shyla. Are you, uh, are you still here? And yeah, I am still here. Oh, so, yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great. This was great. Like I am sort of amazed by the number of people. Um, I'm assuming a lot of founders are on the call, even though they didn't pitch. So just the breadth of talent um, that I've seen. I mean, just amazing. So great job um, for us, right? So not only are we raising a fund, but we thought about the founder in mind. We created Zane Access, the t-shirt that I'm wearing, that is our programmatic arm. And so if you are an entrepreneur who are looking to get capital ready or who are looking to sort of engage with other entrepreneurs, I would suggest giving us sort of a, um, a chance to kind of bring you into our community. You can reach us at zane.bc um, and all of our information is there. I am Shyla Nieves Bernie on every platform. So you can definitely connect with me there. We have a lot of stuff going on over um, at Zane Access and really trying to make sure the diverse entrepreneurial ecosystem has everything under one umbrella so that you don't have to travel the country looking for resources. We sort of kind of created a um, sort of a roadmap with all of them. So uh, definitely connect with me, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm very active there and on Twitter, I'm only there for laughs. So um, not really business, but really uh, we'll, we'll We'll, um, you know, talk with anybody anywhere. So thanks so much. I really enjoyed this. This was great. Um, and I'm looking for more of these. Amazing. Yeah, we were, we we're thrilled to have you um, and be part of this. And yeah, we definitely want to stay in touch. I think there's a lot of stuff that we can do. Um, and, you know, for, for all the invest, we're, we're also going to be rolling out this ongoing funding application for, for startups in our network. And then on the back end, we're going to give access to investors. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on great. that because I know it will probably be interesting. We had a lot of companies apply. There were, there were some great companies that we didn't even, you know, obviously we can only select six. So um, there, there's other great companies and we want to do more pitch competitions. So uh, we'll keep you posted. And yeah, Shiloh, it was great. It was great being part of this. And thank you so much. Um, Mac, are you still here? And uh, we'll, we'll toss it over to you. Uh, if you want to share any final thoughts and where people can find you. I'm not sure if he left or not. I don't see him here. So I think he had an eight o'clock call, so he may have dropped okay. off. Okay. Hey, 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 Michael. 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 Tam, are you still here? I think you're still here. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Michael. Thank you so much for being a part of this and great questions and, and everything. I'd love people who came in late a little bit about you or in craft and you know where people can find you or get in touch. Yeah, thanks again for having me. Um, uh, let's see. So Craft, yeah, Sector Agnostic Fund. Um, interest in B2B SaaS marketplaces, investing out of a, a little over $500 million fund. C to B. Um, you can reach me at michael at craftventures.com. Um, my inbox is, is, I'm pretty behind like everyone else on my inbox, but if there's a question in there and I can answer it, I definitely will do my best. Um, and yeah, hope to keep it going. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, Michael. Yeah, uh, it, it seems like everyone, everyone's inboxes and stuff are, are, <laughs> are completely filled and everyone's schedules are all over the place. So thank hey, you everyone for taking the time out of your night. Hey, I know. Hey, hey, Michael, sorry, can I, can I preempt? Yeah. What's going on? Can anybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, so Girls University and Ashley, they're doing really important work and they did not win the competition but there's 200 people still left in this room. There are 300 participants. If everyone took five minutes, 10 minutes out of their day to find some way they can help that organization out, it'd be really incredible for them. It, even if you're you know, just giving advice or whatever, but obviously capital, um, donations, whatever it may be. So I'm uh, pledging whatever uh, prize money and credits and all that other stuff to directly to Girls University. If the other winners don't need it or won't get a tremendous amount of value, I implore you to uh, donate to, oh, see Ashley, she has a GoFundMe. Please drop your GoFundMe in there. She's doing really important work for, not just for her business, but for our community. And she's doing it at the right stage. These are young children. These are young girls that can be put on the right path for the rest of their life. And in any way, there's 200 people in here. Take five minutes, find something you can do. Donate $50, do something to help out Ashley at Girls University.
Thank you. Appreciate that, Nax. And yeah, thank you so much. Uh, he, he messaged me privately. He was going to give, if, if he won the thousand dollars, he was going to give it uh, to Girls University. So I totally agree. Um, Antra, and I'll make sure that we donate at least a hundred dollars or something to the GoFundMe uh, to help with them. Cause yeah, I think, uh, you know, childhood education is huge. Um, so we'll make sure we, we join on that. Um, Ashley, drop your, your GoFundMe and, and, you know, feel free to email it to me as well. So uh, I don't forget, but um, yeah, thank you Nash for bringing that up and thank you everyone for sticking around and, and really being a part of this. Um, you know, we're here for support. We're doing this because we want to help, you know, founders, um, you know, that that's our whole goal. It doesn't matter who founders are, where, where they're at, whatever. We want to make entrepreneurship more accessible and more streamlined and easier to help people start businesses, you know, and grow their businesses. So please reach out to us. Um, we'll, we'll drop something. We'll drop some links in here. Uh, please make sure you, if you enjoyed this, then you will enjoy our app and connecting with entrepreneurs 24 um, seven and investors. You can do it super easily. I just dropped the link to our website. And for those of you that are sticking around, we are going to do some breakout sessions. So if you want to meet and network with some other founders and investors that are on the event, um, stick around. Um, and, and we're going to do some breakout sessions here in the next couple of minutes. Um, if there's anything, you know, else that, um, you guys have, you can just reach me directly at Michael at join Um, if there's, you know, if you have questions, um, I'm, I'm always on our app, you know, now as well. Um, and we're going to be doing a more, uh, public launch come August. So get in there early, grab your usernames for, uh, the next social network. Um, and, you know, really appreciate you guys being a part of this.